a previous session took a crap, but it was lying to me, and it was telling me that it was still live and broadcasting. Um, and then I checked my video uploads, and it said it wasn't. So here's a part two. Um, Clive Bundy is running a little late right now. Um, we're not sure exactly uh, when he's going to be on, but we have his uh, his bodyguard, his primary uh, security guard, on the call with us right now, and um, we're all coordinating that. So I'm going to turn up the volume on the call. And again, sorry about that. And, uh, that kind of stuff. Just, just really horrible what the BLM did. What breaks my heart is that these people have to go through this. And and I just want to say thank you to you people for standing up for us and for the oh, yeah. police. But it it's um it doesn't look good for our future. Well man, whenever you want to talk about it, you just feel free to call back in and we'll talk to you. Thank you so much for taking my call. No problem. You have a good evening. You too. Thank you. Ms. Wayne, can you um, verify something? It seems the cows, some of the cattle in the back village actually shot. I think there was one particular uh, situation where one of the uh, cattle, one of the cows was actually shot like 13 times. Um, I don't know about that. I never asked Clive that information. I did know about the one bull being shot in the head. I don't know how many bullet holes were there. I know they're trying to get a forensic veterinarian to um, go over that stuff to get an accurate uh, report that they can file and what the court is doing and also try to get some kind of, hopefully they can get some kind of compensation for it. Um, but uh, yeah, it was a, a pretty horrible thing they found there on the ground. And I think Clive or Carol or somebody from the family who were directly involved in that would be better to answer that question. Okay. Wayne, do you have a little bit more time to take a couple more callers, please? Of course. Okay. Now, uh, let's go with uh, 2594. Before it can yeah. If you have any of the uh, Clive Bundy or the Bundy questions you want to uh, have to ask Wayne, ask what's going on. If you have any legal questions, you, you're more than happy to ask me. I can help you. I am in January. Go ahead. Okay, we're going to take caller 2598. You are now engaged. Oh, yes, my name is Robert Page. I'm from uh, Edmond, Oklahoma, and I was wondering if, if I can post a link to the Agenda 21 document, the 365-page report that was issued back in 1991 from the United Nations onto, that, onto, onto other websites and as well as the Specifically for that 16-year-old boy who was trying to understand the June 21, where can I post that link to? You? Um, we have a Facebook group page, and it's called Community Conference Calls. And when you when you get on the top of it, the phone number to call in is right there on top. You you can feel free to post it there, sir. Also, I might elaborate on the agenda uh, uh, 21 deal. Also, please look up the Biodiversity Treaty which is not talked about a lot, and it talks about how they plan to depopulate everybody and, and it shows you all the zones that are already drawn out. That was done under Bill Clinton, believe it or not. Uh, very spooky. If you guys get a chance, please research the Biodiversity Treaty. You know, Lane, I'm so glad you brought that up because, you know, one of the things I've been saying for the past week, 22 hours a day, is when you're talking on Facebook with people, you're typing a message, and there's no emotion, there's no human involvement. As to where when you call into the conference call, you hear my voice, you can hear the emotion in my voice, and then you become involved. Right. Okay, caller 2598, do you have any other questions? Uh, yeah, it, so Clive and Bernie will not be on tonight, but he will be on tomorrow night. We will there's, be no confirmation. there's no confirmation that you will be on tomorrow. Okay. Would you like to elaborate on that again, please? Yeah, yeah. There's a, we don't know if it's for sure. Buddha did tell me that he would try um, until, uh, until we can get him to say, yes, he's going to be on, and, we actually, and he's actually on. And that's when we'll know we have confirmation. I don't want to give anybody false hope that he's going to be on. Um, now, if you go to my Facebook page, you can call, the, or the, really the best updates for you guys to get, you can go to the Bundy Ranch Facebook page. It's got about 119,000 likes on it now. And that's where you're going to get your most up, updated information on everything that's going on. Also, um, there's a phone.
phone numbers and addresses to their place if you want to send donations or call in or your support or anything else. And if there's anybody out there that is thinking about volunteering and going out to the ranch, we do have a volunteer hotline number that you can call. It has been posted on the community website page or Facebook group page. The volunteer number is 702-793-9217. If you're thinking about going out there, you might want to give that number a call and let them know your information and that you're headed out that way. Okay, caller, 2598, was there anything else? No, ma'am. As a veteran of the United States Navy, I just want to say fair winds and following team. Thank you very much. Have a good evening, sir. And we're going to take the next caller, which is 540, I think we just did that one. 5668. 5668, you are now engaged. It's me again. Um, I was actually going to come up on the Agenda 21. But it uh, looks like everyone else commented on that. But uh, as far as the California watering thing, um, is there any updates on that? Or, you know, I like, totally don't up all the water. All right. Larry Murda, do you have any updates on the California water thing? Are you still with us? I'm still here. Uh, what was the question? California water thing where we're saying that the people in California don't own the water? The groundwater. The farmers aren't allowed to use it because of uh, the government. I will have to research that. Can you call again tomorrow? I'll definitely be on top of that for you. I use my usual caller, so yeah. All right. I'm sorry. I, I I, I'm mostly done right. Um, the, the the Bundy Ranch thing uh, kind of pulled me away from that. Uh, obvious reason, because we all love we, we all love uh, Bundy for, for, for what he stood for and, and what he's standing for. And, and yeah, I wanted to get out there. Um, usually, I'm about gun rights. My wife is heavily into uh, the the water situation, so I will uh, I will figure out uh, exactly what that. Accurate information is in pass that on to you. All right. All right. Thank and plus, you. Uh, thanks, uh, Larry. Plus, uh, with the cattle on the range, that's the organic meat that you buy. It's not. Uh, okay. We we have a lot more callers in the queue. All right. Thank you. All right. Let's go to the next caller. It is four eight. Four one, four eight four one. You are now engaged. Hey, Mrs. Minnesota. Uh, I just wanted to uh, tell Mr. Cooper there that uh, I liked his uh, effort for the SmackDown with Younger Kane. Uh, that was pretty awesome. I I wish you would have responded better, but uh, you know it is what it is. Um, other uh, comment or question, I guess you can say it is, is um, what do you think the uh, the end game is from what you've seen on the ground and whatnot. Do you? I personally don't see the fence coming in, guns blazing anytime in the near future. I see more of a long, drawn out legal battle. Um, do you have any uh, opinion on that one way or the other? Um, yeah, and you see, your thoughts are the same as mine and a lot of others there. Um, like I said, mostly the people that are there now were not there for a gunfight. We're not there telling the feds, come on in and get it. They're just mainly there to, for the security of the family. Of course, you know you've seen in history with Waco and Ruby Ridge and other incidents through history that the government came in and slaughtered a lot of people. Um, it happens all the time with what they did with the Indians. And this was the one time in history, and this, this is why we have a Second Amendment. And this is why we have gun rights, because free speech enforced, with the First Amendment enforced with the Second Amendment, is a hell of a force as you've seen here, that we were able to make the feds retreat. Um, now, there's some discrepancy whether they retreated because of safety reasons, but um, they were outgunned, and that uh, they knew we were there, we mean business, that they were going to kill innocent women and children and men, that we would step up and defend them, and we were willing to die with them as well. Uh, about, so, uh, 
Thank you, Chisholm, and sorry about the working for you as well. Uh, I know that you're probably a busy man too, so it's a you know, sacrifice for everybody involved. And uh, you know, tell my support and that is, and uh, I just hope it does come to a peaceful conclusion and the people are across this nation start to wake up. And, uh, oh, one other thing, uh, I don't remember which one it was, I can't remember the story, but I was watching some kind of news program today, and the news caster, uh, caster was now referring to the Bundy Ranch as the Bundy Compound. And uh, that's just the kind of verbiage we're going to keep getting on this. We're going to make them out and that would be some exactly. racist guy. That that. Uh, there was a lot of, I'm sorry to interrupt you. There's a lot of people who kept using the word compound. They said this is a ranch. It is not a compound. We don't want the government to think that it, that it is a compound because it's not. Um, it's just a ranch that we're trying to keep innocent lives um, safe from uh, over oppressive governments or, so, or somebody rogue going in there who just wants to get some kind of media exposure, wants to try to inflict some harm on the Bundy family. So we try to tell people to stay away from the term compound because then you're talking about like a Waco type of scenario. Yeah, and and I, I think they're using that term on purpose. There, there's an agenda there. Same reason no, they is, didn't do it. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I think all of us that are really following the story are definitely key to that. But the vast, vast yeah, majority of the people watching the news and whatnot every night, they, they don't have any idea what's going on. Okay. One thing you got to remember about mainstream media, like you said, they have an agenda, and they're still corporate and government ran. And whatever they can do, this, whatever reason they can look for to try to kill this movement, they will. Indeed. Well, thank you for your time, and thanks for letting me ask the question, Bob. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I want to add to that, uh, we have been telling everybody, and I'm going to reiterate since we have 46 callers still on the line, if you see a news report that you know is false, if you see a news comment that you know is false, call them out on it. Turn your recorder on, borrow somebody's cell phone, and make a phone recording of you calling them and ask them, why are you saying this? If they hang up on you, post it on their Facebook page. If the media can be nasty, so can we. It's time for the sensationalizing of headlines to be gone with. I think everybody's fed up with that. And by the way, it is 10.08 p.m. Central Standard Time. You are on a moderated uh, conference call. We have Blaine, who is in security out there protecting Mr. Bundy and his family. Mr. Bundy is not going to be with us tonight, and we will announce as soon as we have confirmation when he will be with us. Aww. If anyone has a question, a comment, or a concern that they would like to ask Blaine, please press star six on your phone, and you'll hear the operator say, please press one if you'd like to ask a question. Hit that one button, and you will be put in the queue so that you can ask a question. Harvey? Yes. Can I ask, can I ask one question real fast here? You sure can, Larry Murdoch. Anything for you. Okay, I, I'm sorry, Blaine Cooper. I did not realize um, you're the same Blaine Cooper that totally verbally body slammed uh, McCain uh, in that Arizona uh, uh, conference or whatever, right? A town hall meeting they had, yes, sir. <laughs> you're totally famous. I had no idea that I was talking to the same guy. I so yeah, appreciate it. Yeah. You sit there. Well, you know, and the funny story about that was the same idea with the media. They lie to people. I knew they were lying to people, and I knew McCain was dirty. And, and uh, you know, since nobody else was standing up saying what needed to be said, I thought, I guess I'll do it. And that's why I went down there. That's beautiful. That is, that is so beautiful. Thank you very, very much for doing that. You're welcome, sir. Hey, Blaine. That is Larry Murdoch. He was out there up at the ranch for a couple of days, I think four days. And he's originally from California. He's an awesome guy. Just wanted to introduce you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's nice to meet him. Okay, we're going to take the next caller, and that is uh, 1814. You are now engaged. 1814. Yeah. Hello, sir. Uh, anybody's interested, they're having a live broadcast. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, okay. They're having Jason Patrick Eleven is doing a live broadcast at the uh, 
Vents are having a season right now. Well, that's awesome. Can you post the link on our community conference page? Uh, I'll have to find it. It's on okay. Facebook. If you just type into your search community conference calls, the page will pop up and it has the phone number that you dialed right on top. Okay, hang on just a second here. Community conference calls? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, so, uh, okay, then I'll post it there, and then uh, if anybody wants to, it's it's live right now, so they look like they're having a nice time. It's real peaceful, so that's all I've got. I'll post it, and I found your page, and I'm done. Thank all you. right, well, thank you. Thank you for letting us know about that. We appreciate it. And we have another caller, 941. Four nine four one four. You are now engaged. How you doing, Blaine? My name is David Bryan. I'm calling you from Michigan. I made a statement on your uh, Facebook page earlier about giving you some nighttime glasses, and I would love <laughs> yeah, nothing more than to give you. I would love nothing more than to give them to you personally, brother. Uh, my question is, what? Of the everyday life like out there at the Fundy Ranch now, what are people doing to keep themselves busy? And I mean, uh, it can't be all mil militia guys that are out there. I mean, there's got to be a lot well, of family. Well, as a matter of fact, the, the, the Bundys have a lot of family. Uh, to be honest, even being out there as security, we feel like we're right at home. They are the nicest people you ever did meet. They feed us, we have dinner every night. Um, there, um, they keep us watered, and uh, they always got Gatorade and everything else ready for us to you know, keep us nourished. Um, but really, it's you know, it's just people getting getting uh, along with their lives with ranching and working, and uh, you know, they ride horses out there and their quads. You know, no different than than things that some other people would do at their house. You know, um, so it's not uh, not tents, not uh, you know, it's not like people are on edge or anything. Um, I would encourage everybody if they get a chance to go out there and meet the Bundys, they won't regret it. Well, I was talking a little bit with you earlier on your comments, and I was telling you that me and the little woman love the rustic camp, and I've got some time coming up. I'm just a little short on cash because, as I told you, I was uh, right. in a car accident, and it looks like my asphalt career may be over, so. If I get some time and get a little I cash to together, get the, and if I get some cash coming in from the insurance company for lost wages, I'd like to come out here and do a little camping and, you know, bring my dogs. And I won't be able to do any horseback riding, of course, because I've got a broken back. But I'd love to come out there and meet the family, meet you, and I'd love to hand you a pair of nighttime goggles to help keep you brothers out there safe, you know. Yes, sir. Well, I'll tell you what, whenever you're ready, you let me know. You can swing by my house and get me personally. I'll go with you. All right, brother. Well, I'm going to try to pack up some supplies and see what kind of donations I can get here in my community, go through some of my stuff and see if I can't get some camping gear together and get some stuff to help you people out. Because this isn't something that's just going to end tomorrow or next week or a month from now. This is something that's going to go on for a long time, brother. Yeah, yeah. I know we were planning on keeping people out there for a long time to come until the, until the, until Harry Reid and people in government say, you know what, we're sorry. That's that's what we want to hear. When, when well, you know that's can, gonna that's gonna be a long time coming, right there, brother. Yes, if it comes at all. But you know what? It's really the sheriff has the authority. All he has to do is tell the BLM they're done and they want their weapon, and it's done. Oh. I've got a couple of sheriff deputy buddies of mine that are in my local hometown here, and uh, they've kind of talked about it a little bit, and they're talking about putting a motorcycle run together out west and just stopping by and seeing what's going on. Yeah, it's a good idea. I mean, they can use all the support they, they can get. You see, this this is how revolutions are won and fought. As we, we leave our, our Facebook and our screw tube, to get behind a, an American citizen and help fight his cause with him. 
this is what made our nation great is we got behind each other. We've run into this situation in America. We have so much individualism, uh, individualism now. We need to have, you know, like Jesus said, to love your neighbor as yourself. And here Clive can use our support, and we should love him and support him. And we're really looking at ground zero for the revolution of our our country, because we can make a statement and win here if we can win anywhere. And it shows you how effective our Second Amendment really is in this country. And our first amendment. I mean, without without those two amendments in the Constitution, I mean, you you are enslaved. Well, isn't it funny how the government talks about spreading liberty around the world, but look at how our citizens are being treated right here on our own home turf. Right, right. Well, you know what Benjamin Franklin said: "Those who sacrifice their freedom for security will preserve neither and lose both." We signed away a lot of our rights and a lot of our protection uh, from our Second Amendment to people like law enforcement and federal agencies. And look what it's become. This is why governments are so destructive. Because when they get that kind of power, the power corrupts and absolute power will corrupt ab absolutely. And it destroys many innocent lives around the world. Yes, it does. And it's I don't know, it's got to get better, but, you know, they always say things get worse before it gets better. Let's hope it doesn't go that direction. Yes, sir. Oh, brother, I'll let you get to some of these other calls, but I look forward to meeting you someday, and like I say, I'm going to try to put all the supplies and everything that I can pack in my Jeep Grand Cherokee, and I'm heading that way as soon as I can get out of here. Sounds good. You too, brother. All right, well, you guys you can stay off here. Keep your heads low. You make sure you have a safe trip and give us a holler while you're out there, okay? All right. Well, I'll let everybody know when I'm on my way and so what kind of supplies they can look forward to. I don't know what the price of water is there, but we can get it pretty cheap around here. I live in the Great Lakes state, so we got plenty of water. Well, All right, good. All right. Well, I hope to see you soon, brother. You too, brother. All right, you be safe. Yes, sir. Okay, we will go to the next caller. That is 5407. 5407, you are now engaged. They've been actually uh, sitting there for a while. I'm not sure if you planned on staying unmuted or not. I think she chimed in earlier. Uh, 5407, I'm going to mute you. And then unmute you again. If you hear a chime, feel free to speak up. You are uh, engaged in the call to talk to Blaine Cooper, uh, which was actually one of the heads of the security, if I'm not mistaken, here at the Bundy Ranch, um, who's taking a break. Blaine, you said you were planning on heading out there one more time? Um, yeah, I'm probably going to go out there as much as or often as possible. Um, matter of fact, uh, is only out there because I got a hold of him. So I asked him if he wanted to go. I heard about this from Mike Fry, who got a hold of the Arizona State Militia. And I told him, I said, let's go then. I said, if there was ever a time in history where we had to make a stand against the federal government, this would be it. You are correct, Amundo. Did, uh, did Oklahoma really send out as many guys that's been posted online? They might have. I don't know. Um, I know Jerry there, who is the head of the militia um, in that area. Um, they, they, their members were growing quite uh, substantially, so I don't know where that's going as, as of now. Like I said, we were not in charge of the militia, just the security, personal security of the family, basically from Clyde's front gate to the end of his driveway. Good, and everybody seems to be getting along fairly well. I like to hear that. I know it could be a, you know, a tense situation having so many, uh, you know, top notches from so many different states show up. And, you know, but, uh, I would like to say, um, I would like people to know this is just not your average, you know, duct tape redneck convention. These are people who were police officers, um, people who were ex Marine Corps snipers, or uh, Marine Corps snipers. No, there is no ex Marine, but. Um, Army snipers, uh, these are people who are currently serving in the armed forces as well, who came out to help Clyde in his cause. So um, this, this, is not, this is not just a, 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 a crazy movement, you know, I think this is a, a real movement with real people um, uh, 
uh, honest, freedom-loving Americans who want to go out there and, and, and finally make a stand and tell, we, we've had enough. We've had enough. You're right. We actually, uh, do you remember, you didn't spend much time with those groups while you were there. You were primarily, obviously, in the house and around the ranch, but uh, you didn't really get a chance to really mingle, mingle with any of those guys at uh, Chester and Charlie's. Yeah, no, I didn't. Um, I wanted to, but uh, me and Buddha felt it was more important to just keep as close as we can to the family. Fair enough, fair enough. I know there's only so much you can say anyway, but I was just trying to keep an eye out. Right. We had, uh, to be honest, there's, there's not a lot to say. Um, it depends on which conspiracy website you go to. But really, it's, it's pretty laid back out there. It's, it's, not a, it's not as big as a deal as people are making it out to be, as long as we can keep a presence there, of course. Um, now, if we drop the movement and just let it fall out of the sky, that's when potentially something bad could happen. And that's what we're trying to prevent. We're trying to keep that movement out there as long as possible so they have a chance to win their movement. So whether that be legal in court, um, and that's basically where it's at right now. You have to ask yourself how ridiculous it really sounds to charge cows a fee to eat grass. That's about what this is all over. It's really stupid. Um, uh, it just it, it, The whole thing just boggles the mind of common sense. And, and that's really what it just, I mean, that's what they're using as their push pin. But, I mean, how, how can, I, I don't fully understand the BLM. I'm in Chicago. We don't have that much farmland, or obviously, around me. But, you know, how can a, you know, as far as I know, this company, BLM, is also incorporated, is what I've been heard, um, in Puerto Rico. They don't really have any, quote, unquote, federal authority in order to work out some sort of agreement there was a contract obviously that was not signed by the Bundy family so they really should have zero authority whatsoever being a, a foreign corporate entity uh, using the guise of some federal direction but it just seems like all this goes a lot deeper than cow grazing fees um, I don't know you know without it goes very as a matter of fact um, I did hear the Puerto Rico thing that means that means there's a foreign army on our soil, and why is that? That's that's running under the guise of the federal government. Um, oh, Blaine, let Go me fill, let me fill you in on that. According to the documents that we've uncovered, the BLM is actually a subsidiary of the United States of America. It has been incorporated in Puerto Rico in 1925. It has not been reincorporated since. Which means in 1925, Puerto Rico had nothing to do with the United States. When they came on to the Bundy's land with guns pointed, it was considered an act of war. Right. They should have been arrested immediately, all of them. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I agree. Am I still audible on hey. the line? Yeah. Hey, just checking. Um, hey Blaine, um, this is Dave Kelso here in Chicago. I'm actually going to be doing lunch with Brian tomorrow. Um, thank you for being on this call. I, I've I've been loving everything you've been saying, and um, the only other thing you know that I wanted to say is about this as, in regards to the stuff you were saying is um, the the uh, globalists do not engage in a conflict that they feel they cannot control. So that's why they're not going to drone strike or anything like that that could potentially trigger any sort of revolution or whatever that they feel is not under their control. They only deal with false flags that they feel are under their complete control. So that's why I personally feel that they're not going to do that. Right, right. They're control freaks. Yeah, um, if you think about it, if, if the federal government was to say they went in there with uh, a raid, um, it would cause a, 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 a ripple through this country that would just be unstoppable. And I think they know that. Um, and especially if they drone strike them, um, that's just, I, like I said, political suicide. I mean, you would have an uprising in the likes God has never, has never seen. You got women and children gonna... there. Regardless of what anybody think about thinks about cattle fees or something, federal government needlessly kills children. You know, it's like that is not yeah, a headline had... that would go over well. Exactly. They had guns pointed at kids. Mm -hmm. But that's not what the headline is going to be. The headline is going to be children rise up with stones and attack the BLM. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> and 
unfortunately, that's how the United States works. Yeah, or but no. when you've got change. when you've got real actual deaths, that's a different story, and you can't keep that hidden on that scale. All the BLM did is beat up a few people and taser them. Nobody was murdered, to my knowledge, so there's no bodies to show for anything. Um, but if they massacred, Thank like God. you know, let's say let's say two thousand people end up at the Bundy Ranch at any given time, hypothetically, if they just go in and massacre two thousand people, you can't keep that a secret. No. They, they couldn't even keep the dead cows as a secret. Yeah, no kidding. Well, I came across... I came across I think the news report... Oh, my God. I came across the news report that has four pictures in it, five pictures I hadn't seen before. And when I clicked on the second picture, my retarded mouse, like, triple and quadruple clicked it, and it opened up 400 pictures and it has to be somebody from the BLM side, and because they were standing there posing for pictures. So I enlarged them a little bit and took screenshots of them and sent them to a friend who's making up some wanted posters. <laughs> That's great. Oh, by the way, one quick little thing. Earlier, um, my my YouTube live stream. I don't know at what point, but it actually crapped out, but it didn't tell me it crapped out. It told me it was still streaming live. Someone came to me on Facebook like, hey, what happened to the stream? And, and Spreaker crapped out at the same time, too. Apparently, it's back now. But they were telling me what happened to the stream. And I sent them a screenshot. Look, it's still live. No, it's not. It's a, it's a recorded uh, file, and that's it. So I checked my YouTube uploads, and sure enough, it's like 41 minutes or whatever. So I had, I had to restart it with a part two. But I mean, for it to just crap out like that and still make claim that it's recording, uh, you know that there's other people listening to this call, if you get my meaning, who are playing a little fun and games. Spreaker craps out. YouTube's telling me it's still recording when really it's not. Come on. All right. Well, you know, that's fun, funny that, that you say that. This is Brian. Um, for the first time since I've owned this phone, uh, it just has been doing some really crazy stuff. I was out of that call for about 10, give it 15 minutes here earlier while Blink's been on, and I apologize for that. Barbie's been doing a great job, and I've been back for about 20 minutes, but yeah, that was frustrating. And Spreaker did the same thing as well as did my uh, phone, all within the same five-minute period while he went down for the same uh, frame of time. Just throwing that out there, uh, we really appreciate you chiming in right now, Mr. Yeah, three things going down that are completely separate technologies, and then they go back hey. up, and all at the same time. I'm sorry. Coincidence is coincidence, if you look at the spelling. It means things that are hey, connected. Dave? What's up? Yeah. How about we take another caller before Blaine has to leave us? Good idea. Okay. Caller 4181. You are now engaged. Caller 4181. Hi. Uh, Lily, you can hear me now? Yes, ma'am. How are you tonight? I'm good. My name is Kathy. I'm calling from Texas. Um, there was some um, update that just happened about uh, 20 minutes ago on Facebook, uh, Raising Elephants radio broadcast Facebook page, that um, they said that they had some confirmed reports that there was going to be drone strikes on the Bundy Ranch tonight. Um, they were saying they hope it wasn't true, but they said that their um, their resource um, confirmed that it was most likely true. Do you guys know anything about that? Yes, ma'am, I do. Um, we had that come through about nine hours ago, and it was through an unconfirmed source. And when we asked for their confirmed source, they would not give it to us. And finally, somebody else got in touch and one person after another after another. It's basically rumor mill. There is nothing confirmed going in or out right now. And you can look on our conference web Facebook page. There's a live PM feed right there. You can see for yourself. Everything's fine. Great. Thanks. And ma'am, if you could do me a favor, if, sure. you could go, if you could go back to that post and just type in there, this is false information. Don't feed into all the rhetoric because people are going to mm -hmm. holler at you. Just put this is false information and leave it at that. We would really appreciate it. 
Absolutely. Yeah, um, just to let everybody know, too, about a drone strike, if, if they are going to drone strike the area, there's not a lot that we can do about it um, because simply we just don't have the technology out there as citizens to defend against such an attack. Um, um, I'd, I'd, like to, I'd like to add to that, Blaine, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure, go ahead. Uh, we actually are in, in communication with someone that actually has their own private drone uh, manufacturing facility uh -huh. that has offered their services. Unfortunately, they are on the East Coast, but uh, he did right. say if it gets down to that, he's more than happy to bring them out there and show some guys. Um, you know, RCs, I know when they're far away, there's not much you can do, but you, there, there are some ways around some drones. And as well, you've got a couple of air cores that are watching exactly what's going on out there. Um, they're all paying attention paying attention via uh, uh, M operation radio and things of that nature. So if it really does come down to that, if you've got anybody near you that can go hands, um, there, there are definitely some aerial support uh, that is watching what's going on. And there yeah. is a way to jam their satellite frequency to make them fly around blind until they run out of fuel too. So, but like I said, try to keep the rumors down because that could just create a lot of tension um, unless you get it, unless we got a confirmed source. Well, you guys might want to work on building some drone jammers just in case. Think of it like a fire extinguisher. Have it in case you need it, but hope you don't need it. Yeah, I got some great information on that, you guys, on my Facebook page of how to jam the drone. Well, Interesting. I, well, I think we need to move on from that question. Thank you for calling in, ma'am. We really appreciate it. And please feel free to call back anytime. We are here 24 hours a day. And to all the new callers and probably old callers that are here, we currently have 44 callers on the line. It is 10.33 p.m. Central Standard Time. We're asking everybody to please treat everybody else with the same respect you expect to be treated with. And if anybody has any questions, please press star 6. You'll hear the funny little operator say, if you'd like to ask a question, press one. Hit that number one, jump on in here and ask a question. We'd really like to hear from you. 1018, 1018, you, you may now ask your question. Um, it's me again. <laughs> it's Dave. I just heard a thing Jeez. saying, yeah, you may now ask your question. So it's like, I guess I got quickly muted when I didn't realize it, and now I'm unmuted again. I don't know. But all I just heard is, you may now ask your question. All right. That was, that was weird. <laughs> I will get to remembering your phone number, okay? It took me a while to get to remember Brian, so give me a break. <laughs> break you off a piece of that Kit Kat bar. Does anyone else have any questions? 4181, 4181. Muted. Yeah. You are now Hi, on Hi, this is Dan from Texas. Hi, Dan from Texas. I'm Barbie from... If you'd like to ask a question, your request has been received. Yeah, I just want to point out, um, uh, I, I heard a comment mentioning about uh, uh, jamming uh, drones. Just to let you know the technology the military uses. Uh, broadband sources don't do it. Um, there's countermeasures towards that, so um, I don't want you to spend too much money um, trying to create broadband sources. It's not going to work. Okay. I personally wouldn't try that because I know it wouldn't work, um, but I also was told that you can cover everything in mylar bags or mylar plastic. I don't know if that's true or not. I'm an RF electronics engineer and I actually uh, develop and sell the equipment that the government uses to do this type of stuff and, and um, the, the type of stuff, the technology that goes into those drones uh, for SATCOM, that type of stuff, um, it, it's, you're not going to stop those things from flying over and, and completing your mission, so just just want, want you to be aware of that, okay? All right. Yeah, I mean, you can't stop them from flying over, but I heard there are ways to j to jam the line of sight, and they will fly around until they run out of fuel flying. Do you happen to know if that's true? 
Um, no, because there's actually three different targeting systems on it. That, that would only work for him. So they use a C band at 500 to 1000 megahertz that could be jammed with a simple spark gap radio satellite communication. And the Q band between 10.95 through uh, 14.5 gigahertz of the satellite can, uh, can be jammed. The uplink band of the satellite is 13.75 through 14.5 gigahertz. The down, uh, the downlink band from the satellite is 10.95 uh, dash 12.75 gigahertz. Then you should jam the uplink frequencies with the jammer directed at the satellite. That's kind of a way you could do it. Awesome and totally over my head. <laughs> so yeah. Four one eight one. Any other questions? No further. Well, thank you for calling in, and I hope you hang around with us. Yep. <laughs> Can I ask a question? Um, and it's off the topic. Uh, Brian Blaine. Blaine, what are your thoughts of Operation American Spring? Um, I don't know. I've uh, heard a lot about the the operation. I I, I uh, plan on going because a lot of other people are going, but. Like, to be honest, I haven't really read any great depth into it. I just know that it's happening. Uh, people talk about it, that they're going to go um, at this, uh, when uh, the Bundy thing was happening, we were on the ground there, a bunch of people were talking about, now we just need to take it to Operation American Spring. So, uh, but American Spring isn't a armed movement either. It's a peaceful movement, they, they are calling it. Um, but I think without it being armed, it's kind of pointless to go, to be honest with you. Um, they're not sure. Uh, Camp Green comes into Washington, D.C. And you will get shot, most likely, bringing a gun into Washington, D.C. Exactly yeah, what that's exactly what they want you to believe. They want you to believe that because they don't want you to rise up against them. What you don't realize is you've got 100 million gun owners out there. And when they're united together with arms, there is not a force in the world that can stop them, especially the American government. But that big enough movement, there's nothing they could ever do to the American people. They would have no choice but to resign. Okay, can I ask a question, though, Blaine? Yeah, go ahead. Have you seen their Facebook page? Have I seen mine? No, Operation American Spring? Um, I've glanced at it here and there. Did you notice how many likes it had? Um, no, I don't think I know what it's at. Exactly. Okay. Uh, I'm going to explain my train of thought to you. Sure. Operation American Spring has 20,000 plus likes right now. And it, even giving them the benefit of the doubt and doubling it at 40,000, that is not even half of 1% of America. Yeah. Do you realize uh, that? It's, uh, and, uh, unfortunately, it's, it's not enough. No, it's not. I went last September with um, the 2 million bikers, which was actually 3 million. And effectively, they told the police not to help us. They shut down the traffic cams and had them running on loops. Two of them had snow falling. And after we sat and jammed up traffic for four hours, the police decided to start helping us. And I know that count was at least three million, at least. And we did nothing. Right. We effectively did nothing. Yeah, so you have to, if you look back in history, too, um, I don't know if you guys know about the 1932 bonus march, where they have tens and tens of thousands of people, or the World War One vets is what they were, showed up to Washington because they were promised a bonus from serving in World War One, um, And it, they wanted their bonus at that moment because it was at the time of the Great Depression. So everybody was strapped. They all went there and surrounded the White House uh, they were shoving the president and other political leaders out the back door to get out of there for fear of their lives. And they actually called out the military and, and burnt down their camps and poked them out with bayonets. And um, it was a bad deal. But uh, if you look that up on YouTube, there's some good videos on it. I did a good video about it, too. Um, you know, up until this past year. It just week, shows I... you that without the Second Amendment uh, in force, with the First Amendment, you just it, they're not going to listen to you. It wasn't until this past week that I had actually heard about that for the first time. And I've been looking up information on it, and I'm just amazed at how long it's been that our government has been walking on us. Yep, yep. 
Just throwing this out there, Blaine, people that actually are hosting this event, as far as I know, have requested that nobody brings their guns. Yeah, this is AC. Yeah, that's what they said, right? Um, it's American Spring, except for nobody to bring their guns. So, do you feel that most people will still just forego that request? I, I think, I personally think that you're going to have some smart asses out there that are going to take their weapons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I think. I don't know, that'll just give them reason to arrest. That's kind of what I'm worried about, you know. Not a teacher, right? and it, it, now, it is true. If you go there with a low, in, a, a low amount of people armed, it's probably not going to work out very well. But as we've seen here in Nevada, which is a prime example, when you have your firearms against the, uh, the, the federal government, you can win. Nobody wants to get shot and die. But um, the problem is, how many people can you convince to go there and do that? I think if they would have, I think if, people to do that's another thing. I think if they would have set it up a little bit differently, because of the way the law is, so that we could still go there and protest against them and bring our arms, they should have had it set up directly around the 495. This has shut the whole town down. You can take three bridges in D.C. That's it. If we would go to the 495 in a circle the whole way around town, we would shut it down effectively. And everybody could take their weapons. It would not be against the law. Once you get on the bridge, it's against the law. One thing people may remember, too, is this is why I don't agree and think the law should be broken. The founding fathers told, told us if the law is unjust, we have a duty to disobey it. I think any law against the Second Amendment is an unjust law and should be broken. Um, Wait, are you familiar with a gentleman by the name of Adam Kotesh? And are you familiar with what he uh, recently did in Washington, D.C. regarding a shotgun? Yes, I do. Uh, are you the only one that went there and nobody followed him. Uh, I think it was just loosely organized and they were on the other side of D.C. or D.C. and he was on the other right. side. But, yeah, I mean, I give Kokesh credit for actually taking a stand and doing what needed to be done. But you know what they and say, it's better to stand along the truth than in the company of lies. And um, unfortunately, sometimes that isn't the most popular decision as we can see what happened to Adam. And they used him as a example, to make an example out of him, to put the rest of the people in fear. The laws are based on fear from the government that will rise up. You know, as much as I believe you on that, and that we all have the right to carry our weapons, you know, as far as I know, he's now a felon and cannot legally have his weapons because of that. Second Amendment says it shall not be infringed. That means there should be no law that prohibits anybody from ever having a firearm. You do your time, you get your weapon back. That's how I believe it should be set up. And why? Because criminals do not follow guns. They don't follow the law. Columbine, they built 19 gun or 18 gun laws at Columbine. Laws don't make people safe. A high populace armed with a weapon makes them safe. Amen. And I get that, but all the people going there with weapons are soon to be felons. So they'll make 30 million people felons? Um, you see, yeah, in Washington, D.C., District of Columbia, uh, if you're carrying a weapon without a CPWL, you're looking at a $5,000 fine or five-year imprisonment. But if you're 38 million strong, I won't have it. They're not going to make 38 million people. Yeah, but the, the chance that 38,000 people will be there is most likely 38 the million is, people how now. Do you, how do you organize such a movement? How do you convince 38 million people to do that? It is exactly. I, you know how? You check the welfare. Really? Well, yeah, I check the welfare. Well, 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 you, well, well, you, well, 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 you can look at Egypt. Egypt had 38 million people. And they went in and they threw Mohammed Morosi out on his face. Christians and Muslims united together. Not one of them was armed. So if it can be done there, it can be done here. And All right, so 3,000 3, people show up, 1,000 are armed. If they're brandishing, they're most likely getting grabbed. And facial recognition, they'll get them when they get home. I'm not trying to say don't go there. I, I, I'm just, if I was going there, I, 
I most likely would not bring a weapon due to the fact of knowing what I know. Right. Now, when I had some arsenal on the other side of the border, yes. Yeah, and I agree. Unless you have a high enough amount of people who are armed to do that, you would defeat the purpose. Because, but they don't, but if, if the movement's big enough, the U.S. government does not have the resources, and they know it. And that's one thing that they're trying to instill fear into the American people, that they will not take such an action because they know they will lose horribly against the American people. The American people bought enough firearms in the last two years to arm the Chinese and the Indian military twice. Just in two years. That's how well armed we are as a people. Okay, how about we take another caller? Does that sound like a good idea? Go for it. We've got, uh, what, three in the queue. There's uh, 0453. You okay. are unmuted. 0453, go ahead. I, I just feel like if we told people to bring their firearms, that a lot more would show up. So what, if we told, uh, what if we keep doing what we've been doing and tell people, hey, bring your firearms, leave them at the border, get a hotel, and then show up. And if anything pops off, have everybody on the border feel free at that point. But, you know, we, we're trying to have a peaceful engagement. If there's enough people there in force, and they know that around there, uh, legally and lawfully working with the surrounding state sheriffs, et cetera, so that everybody's cool. Hey, we're following the rules, man, but you guys launch one grenade or tear gas or, you know, offset whatever goes off, at least then the guys around there in the borders, it's only 10 by 10 square away. You know, if they start coming off idiotically, then, then the people should be able to defend themselves. Like, you know, just to keep it on the up and up. If nobody's there with a long armed weapon or a, you know a handgun, for that matter, you know they should be okay. They, they they're still going to have enough people there, hopefully, to force some recognition. Whether or not they have guns, I understand. It's one way you could do it. Yeah, one way you could do it is get a hold of some large militia members uh, that we think of a big um, a big following. Like I think down south there's like one that has like 12,000 strong. And those are the people you would want to hang back with the weapon and have the people go in peacefully. Um, and if anything were to happen, they could move in to protect those people. Or so have a big space in the area outside there and see how many show up. And if you have enough to go in arms and get everybody go armed and get it done and over with. Because it's inevitable. We have to do this. There's no other way around it. Right. When you got this kind of injustice in government, there's only one way to handle it. And, you know, it's not a popular idea to go in and arrest your president or arrest the president or arrest other political leaders. The point is, though, that their injustice is, is running so high, it's unimaginable. We did half of the things that these people did. We'd be hung by the neck on a tree. How come they can get away with it and we can't do anything about it? We're the oppression mob. We invented revolution. They just do what they want. They don't follow any of the rules, laws, or anything. I mean, Obama don't even, this might as well not even be a Congress or a Senate. Obama's running the whole damn show. I don't think that he's the one running the show, brother. No, he's not. Well, okay, yeah. well, maybe it's time we show the puppeteers that we're not going to listen to the puppeteers. I think that's who we need to get. There needs to be a call for citizens' arrest. And I can name at least five dozen people that are totally outside of the spectrum, that, have, that are the, 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 the string jerkers, so to speak, that need to be nailed down, tarred and feathered, and brought before the people. I mean, there are some serious repercussions for the kind of treason that they've been perpetu or perpetuating against the American people. And then not to mention... Do we have the means or the ways to target the Rothschilds or Soros and, and get those people? You know, can oh, yeah, that would be easy. Like that? All you got to do is bulldoze those the Fed. Because <laughs> all this points to the Federal Reserve. It, you know what happened, you know how this all got started was back um, when they drafted the original of the organic constitution in 1776, 95 years later they had the civil war and our country was bankrupt. The Rothschilds of London gave us a bailout and we created the 
Act of 1871 under the 41st Congress, which created a separate government for the District of Columbia and a separate constitution that the corporate constitution, which also pre-ratifies the 14th Amendment of the Constitution, making the American people property of the corporation. They block capitalize our country and called it the United States. Which is a corporate name, a corporate entity, or what we really are is not a country anymore, but a corporation sold off to foreign interests. Right? That's where a lot of these problems arise from. But basically, Congress in 1871, with the 41st Congress, committed treason against the American people. The original Constitution read the Constitution for the United States of America. They changed it to the Constitution of the United States of America. And Christian, you're a lawyer. You know that's in legal terms. When you do that to a document, bad things happen. That is correct. So, I mean, so Obama is the president, but Obama is not our beloved republic in that flag that which we so proudly hail. Uh, he is actually the president of a corporation as known as United States Inc., most likely tied to 22 Water Street somewhere. In Washington D.C., all of us, all of us people, we, we, you know, like us people, us, we have to know that there is no other way possible to solve the problems that we're having here in the United States without an armed confrontation. We know that, right? Yes. I mean, voting don't work, systems don't work. Uh, you know, our little rallies and all that stuff don't work. It don't do nothing. They just sneeze at us. Uh, we, like, have, we have oh, to do something. I would like to add one thing. Um, Brian? Yes, ma'am. You're a little bit off there. Let me explain. Before the BLM was incorporated in Puerto Rico, in 1925, the United States of America was incorporated in Puerto Rico. And I have not been able to find another incorporation since 1925. I am still looking, though. Interesting enough, I do believe they are registered in a lot of our bonds and a lot of uh, interesting commercial enterprises, so to speak. Or most of that information is on Water Street in uh, Washington, D.C. There's a very popular building. I won't even say the address. I said it a minute ago, but I probably shouldn't have. But Water Street's holding on to a lot of important bonds that have been created uh, throughout this time. And 1220, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I don't think they realize they're 1220. <laughs> okay, 0453, do you have any other questions, sir? No, I'm done. All right, I'm going to disengage you so that we can engage the next caller. Uh, the next caller is 0367. 0367, you are now engaged. And you disappeared. Oh, that's okay. So, I was going to say, too, we're talking about uh, citizens' arrest. Uh, look what they did in Iceland when they had their movement. Uh, you guys remember that? They took their bankers oh, yeah. and hung them in the street. Are they still doing really well? Um, I don't know. I haven't really checked into it. I, what, the last time I heard was that they were beating the rest of the world in growth after they took down all their bankers. And yeah, the, um, actually the economy in Iceland, I did some research in a couple of months ago, they're doing very well. Um, they've uh, arrested all their bankers, a lot of their governments, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera which I mean, the economy there is flourishing. And that also was a peaceful movement. You just had the whole population who was against them. That's what we're trying to do in, in America. So it's hard, it's hard convincing people that there's the government evil and they want the government wants to kill them. It is it's getting people to believe that it's, it's really hard. It's hard to wake people up. It reminds me of the movie in the Matrix where Morpheus said, Some of these people are not ready to be unplugged and until then they're part of the system and they will fight the Egypt. Oh three six seven, welcome back. Did you have a question? Yeah, I have a question for Blaine. This is Florida one. 
Do you think any federal indictments will be issued against the Patriots? I don't know um, which Patriot. There, there was a lot of them out there. I, I would find it highly unlikely if they could do that with all of them. Well, I mean, do you any of them? I, I don't see it. No. I, I see the, I see the only people coming under fire right now is the BLM. I was wondering the same thing because there was a lot of people showing their license plates off. There's a lot of pictures that were taken and posted that everybody was showing their face. There was a lot of intel being done. And I was kind of wondering the same thing, if any, you know, Oath Keepers or... Yeah, I'm not saying it couldn't happen, but, um, and God forbid it does, but even if it did, that's the small price you pay for being a patriot, I guess. You know, especially me. I'm sure I would be one of the first on the list. Um, well, Blaine, let me, let me tell you, we got your back. Yeah, I mean, if... Uh, if I have to go sit in jail for standing with Bundy, then it's a sentence I will serve happily and with honor. And we're going to start the Underground Railroad back up again so that we can make sure you're all safe. Because I know I really appreciate everything you did out there. I appreciate everything you continue to do by spending your time talking to us, <laughs> giving us answers to questions that we wouldn't be able to get answers to otherwise. I'm sure everybody on the line appreciates all the time you spent with us tonight. Um, a lot of times when we get boots on the ground call in, they don't have time to sit here and talk and answer all of our questions. And I just right. want you to know how much we really do appreciate it. Oh, yeah, no problem. I'm happy to be here with you guys. Mm -hmm. Florida, I have a question for you. What makes you think that the um, Patriots will have some federal charges or indictments brought up them, against them? I don't think. I'm just wondering. I'm um, just wondering. They all they, 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 all based on, on, based on, on, go ahead, I'm sorry. With all the pictures, you know, that's coming out and tags and everything else, I was just wondering if if the federal government would bring up charges. The only charge that I can see happening to the people out there is that they have not registered their weapons if they've been there longer than six days with the actual county. That's the only um, law that they've broken as far as I know so far. Um, two, another law, say you had convicted felons out there running with firearms while they're on probation. Um, you know, that information got out to their probation officer, then you can have that problem as well. Well, that, that, that situation of their own probation makes them own better, and that's their responsibility, and that's their problem. Exactly. That would be no the individual problem. Exactly. They have, no, they have no business, out, even out of the state, if they're on probation. Out of their state. They have no business out of the county that they have the probation in, without permission of their probation officer. Exactly. Unless, of course, their probation officer was there with them. And even then, I don't think that's legal. <laughs> okay, 0367, did you have any more questions? Nope. Other than to tell Blaine, thank you for getting on the call with us. Hey, you're welcome, sir. Thank you for uh, you know calling in. Yeah, thanks for everything you're doing, man. No problem, sir. Um, Blaine, I'll give you a little tip. Florida One's one of our guys. He's awesome. He listens to ham radio and he checks down second reports for us and he helps us confirm things. He is just an awesome guy that has been helping out the best he can with everything that we throw at him. Okay, I want to make a public service announcement here. It is 11 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. We still have 35 callers on the line. That is three five callers on the line. If you have questions that you would like to ask, please press star six. If you have a comment you'd like to make, please press star six. If you have a concern you'd like to voice, please press star six. When the operator asks, hit that one button and come on in and talk to us. Blaine has spent a lot of time with us tonight. 
even if you just want to say thank you to them, we'd appreciate you chiming in so that we can let you talk to them. And again, Blaine, you know, we we really have we have tried really hard to do everything that we can to support you guys out there, and I wish we could do more. I wish I could be there. My husband took my car keys when it first started. So my way of helping is to be here as much as humanly possible. Right, right. Well, then that's the thing, just being there in spirit, getting the information out, and we all work together as one. That's what's going to help it the most. Uh, it's, uh, it's the division of it that's really going to hurt us. And, and right now, we got it, it, it's really a, a historic moment right now of how many people are driving across country just to get there so they can stand there with Bundy and with Colin. I mean, that's pretty amazing. We haven't seen something like that in a long time. I think it well, happened too. In no time in history that I'm aware of, at least while I've been alive, as this many groups, you know, behind the whole militia or ideal, the protectors of their states, of their people, of their neighborhoods, etc., all chimed in, all these different groups together as one uh, for the first time, I mean, what, since the revolution to get together and support you guys. It's incredible. And, and it's about time, because now they, people are really seeing, well, you know, hey, you know what, there was no bloodshed. They held their own. They got their ranchers back. Maybe the militias aren't so bad after all. Maybe they're realizing, hey, there are a, a butt ton of active duties, a lot of good old guys, veterans, you know, whatever they go home and go back to do, these are everyday Joes, and, and people are starting, starting to get it. Hey, you know what, I am a militia. I am militia. Whether or not I have a gun, I am one of the people, I am over 18, and uh, guess what? My constitution tells me that if I'm able-bodied, I am militia. You don't join a militia, you already are a militia. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You make a great point there. That's the point I've been trying to get to people a lot is that we just showed the world and, and the country that an armed militia and even armed citizens and have a show of force peacefully and not one shot be fired and not one life be taken and still win the fight. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing. Like what you thought might be a massacre of bloodshed because you had an opposing force there who was outgunning the, the other side that they, they recognize that this wasn't going to go over very well for the BLM. And, but it also shows that we were peaceful in it, that we, we weren't just a bunch, you know, we're not a bunch of gun pointing crazy folk out there who just want to start a war and kill a bunch of people. And we're trying to prevent that. That's the whole reason we were there. And that's the whole reason we wanted to help get that mentality across on these calls, man. It was hard, you know, there was a lot of people like, all right, I'm headed out there. You know, we kept repeating, hey, they want people protesters there. You know, don't come. You know, you can keep yourself in the trunk for now, just so you don't get pulled over and harassed. But you know, don't come in guns are blazing, balls to the walls, full battle rattle. It's not exactly what they're looking for right now. You can come, bring your stuff, but as of right now, you know, it's peaceful and they want to keep it that way. Right. Yeah, that's one. Now, now there were some guys like that out there, but we ran those guys off. We just said, you know, if you're here just to. Uh, if you're here just for a gunfight, this isn't the place. We're trying to prevent a gunfight. Um, so if there was people out there who were just out there, you know, I'm going to get this started. I'm going to go shoot a bunch of people. Those, those are not the type of people that are out there. And if there was any, we made sure they knew that that's not what we were out there for. Great, because that's what we were trying definitely not to say. <laughs> exactly. I was trying to keep an eye out for it. There was actually a, a tactical team, uh, a group of uh, retired police officers that headed out there. There were 10 of them, brought extra radios, a couple of old timers that just had a lot of experience as far as organizing and communications. And uh, so they came out there and offered their services. I really wanted to kind of get a hold of those guys. I told them to go to you guys directly. So hopefully when they reported in, they've been of, of some sort of assistance at that point. They came from the East Coast without saying too much. Right, right. Do you, do you remember anybody like that offering their services to help you out? Oh, yeah. Um, you guys know who James Yeager is, right? Uh-huh. James Yeager came out with Reed. Um, 
you know, we guard, he guarded Bundy together with us. They did an interview in his yard. But, um, uh, you know, they were um, retired police officer, or Reed the retired police officer, I guess. So, um, but as far as the, the, the group of police officers, they may have been with the militia. I only know what's been at the ranch, but there was police officers out there who were in support of the, uh, the Bundys and were against the BLM as well. So, you know, it, it just, the, the type of people that came to this movement, it really blew your mind. Because you thought they're just gonna, they're just gonna be American citizens like me, you know what I mean? But I was like, wow, there's police officers here, there's ex-military here, there's um, government officials here, uh, uh, you know, that 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 stand with them. So it was, it was really neat to see the variety of Americans who are willing to go take a bullet and die for fighting by this guy. Amazing. <coughs> There were definitely quite a bit of people that were willing to do that, sir, and it was just amazing to see happen. You know, we were trying to really avoid anybody that was trying to be a martyr, but at the same time, it was the people that were actually there to protect and defend and make sure nothing did go off. But if it did, they were willing to, you know, offer their lives in support of this. You know, it, it's right. We, yeah, we don't want to confuse people and say we went out there. Uh, we went out there to help them, and if our, we had to lay down our lives to protect Bunny or other innocent unarmed people, we would have done that. Right. Yeah, lots of sheepdogs showed up. I've seen a lot of footage of some of the guys that went there and uh, actually recognized a handful of people, too. So it's good to see, like, recently active, now non-active guys, you know, taking upon themselves to, uh, you know, kind of direct traffic and point people in the right way, doing the Good Samaritan thing. It was really good to see, man. Um, and you've got all kinds of branches. There was guys, some old timers out there, all the way up to guys, you know, straight out of, uh, you know, the sandbox recently, um, that were all working together. Man, it's a beautiful, yeah, beautiful well, like, thing. Uh, even, yeah, even one of the guards there with us at the house, uh, Darren Stanley. He's still active in the Marine Corps, and uh, he, he was just a young kid who wanted to stand with Bundy. So. And he wasn't the only one. There was a couple of guys there who were still active who were out there. And I was like, you guys are still active when you're here? And they're like, yeah. I said, that's awesome. Hey, Blaine, do you still have a couple more minutes with us? Sure, of course. I'd like to do this at the top of the hour, but I learned a new feature uh, here on the software uh, from the switchboard. I was able to upload a couple of MP3s. Um, uh, is anybody okay with me go ahead and having uh, like a three minute uh, pee pee break and I could just play a song real quick and we can come back and then uh, start this over again? Uh, Alright, let's see how this works. Oh this God, is, uh, we shall go on break. Yeah, this is a buddy of mine. It is not uh, Mike on a bike, the homeless brother that uh, we are, I've been jamming with. Um, this is actually another friend. He's been a freedom fighter in the struggle for quite some time. He's a good word spreader and I'm hoping this works. It's time for the woman to rise up. It's time for the man to make a stand. And it's time for the child to realize it's all in our hands. It's time that you know what's right. It's time that you feel it inside. It's time let it go that you love. Searching the 
first I surmise every light the lights hit. I'm speaking to the ones with their heads up off the flight, trying to do what's right and stay true while you manifest the knowledge for the seeds you know. A seed you grew, who knew change don't come to those who wait. Seize the moment and the struggle and the battle of late. No one knows good souls within. Demonstrate sin, searching for redemption. Asking who the enemy is as we blend ingredients from every experience. Pass the glass, it's a pass the illusion. Shatter misconceptions and change the conclusion. Ain't it clear of you amidst the mass confusion? I rise to be my heart, love. I know we worlds apart. Scar from bars, the same pain, insane. Never underestimate a man in chains with the mental capacity to rise beyond the casualty. Skin deep, be in the mind of formality. Clarity and knowing this isn't the last chance. Never take it for granted, each and every glance in the trance. I rise beyond circumstance. So each and every one of us under the sun, search the earth's eyes, rise to become one. Search the earth's eyes, rise to become one. <laughs> To remove yourself from the queue, please press 1. Otherwise, press 2. Your request has been removed from the queue. You're not accepting friends. If you'd like to ask a question, please press 1. Your request has been received. And once you get to that point, people can follow you. Ah, okay. Well, I did hit the follow button. But if you want to add me or follow me, you can. There's always a ton of great information on my page. Sure. Is it going to be Barbie for the first name, correct? Yep. Barbie L. Rogers. R-O-G-E-R-S. You'll love my profile picture. It's a little peanut holding up a sign that says, are we all just fucking nuts? <laughs> hey, Blaine, you might, you might actually notice uh, in the near future, if you get a chance to do this, if you go through your friends list, I've noticed a high frequency of uh, people that have added me in the last month, I guess, since this has really blown up. Um, a lot of them all of a sudden also have become, uh, their, their profiles go dead for whatever reason. It's whether or not they were not active or if they were pretty, pretty much like fake profiles trying to get in. So I had to go through and delete a lot of the blue faces, you know, that show that same uh, Facebook insignia and delete a lot of them to make room, make room for a lot of real people that were trying to get through to me. If you ever get a chance to do that, it would work. Okay, Blaine. Yeah, five thousand. I gotta go through in there, so take me a while. Yeah, yeah. It's far easier, it's far easier starting a new Facebook page and just adding the ones you want. That's true. I could do that. You just need to get rid of the the friends that aren't really friends, anyways. It's just post up there because all all the people that really know you actually know you're joking around. But the other people won't. We just post up, I love Obama, I voted for Obama, and stuff like that. Yeah, you'll lose friends fast. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's one way of doing it. 
Hey guys, we have a question from a caller. Why don't we take that question real quick? Five Go one five one four one. You are now disengaged. How can we help you today? Oh, I had a question. Um, I was wondering if you knew what your thoughts were on um, the politicians and um, Kennedy and everybody pulling their support from Bundy. Do you have any thoughts on why they're doing that? Well, I have thoughts on why they're doing it, but I think the sensationalized media had something to do with it. And when the truth comes out that everybody's realizing the truth now, I think they're going to turn around and put their support right back in. It's just going to take a couple days, maybe a couple weeks, but everybody's going to go right back in. I have no doubt about that. Well, I kind of get upset because, you know, a couple of those politicians, I kind of kind of had hope that for the future they were going to they were going to be good for the country, and and they pulled out, and it's like it's frustrating. Yeah, you have to realize at the end of the day, reporters and mainstream media, um, and uh, the way our society has been and spread into our young the last thirty to forty years is very liberalized and very, um, you know, oh, you said this, so now I can't support you. Um, so at the end of the day, they're, they're just reporters and they're just politicians. They, I don't believe there's a lot of politicians uh, out there who really, really care about the American people. Um, you know, uh, they, they, see a, they see a chance to get in the limelight, to, to be in the spotlight, and most of the time it's just a way for them to push their agenda. And, um, you know, it, it, it's really sad that it's that way, but that's, that's how it is. Look at this year, 2014, it's a major voting year for politicians. They're going to distance themselves now because of, as then they're using the racial card or the so-called racial statement that Bundy made. Um, and that's why they're getting uh, to track themselves with money and Bundy and Kenny, they're, they're back against them. And that's not really nothing to think of. Well, it's disheartening that they're that they're taking that stance, you know, and that they're going along with the race card. And, and so, I agree, uh, racial. It was not. It, it was not a. It was just an example that he was setting, and to me, that was not a racial statement that he made. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. So it's disheartening that they've kind of taken that stance, you know. So. You have to realize he has not had the education that the common or the typical uh, priest in Washington, D.C. has. He is a cowboy. Right. He I know. He doesn't have a PR person and he doesn't race in the teleprompter and he just speaks off the cuff and from the heart and, and he meant no harm. And it's, it's just disheartening when some of them pull their support from him because of that. And they don't look at the whole picture. Here's an example. My brother grew up in the 80s. My brother comes up and he said to me yesterday, you know, it's funny, all my friends and myself used to support each other, look at my neck, look at my neck. Now, if a, a black person hears that and they're 10 feet away, they'll get offended to that. It's, it's just stupid what's going on. I'm sorry. Yeah, we have a huge politically correct agenda society now. And uh, unfortunately, that's the way it is. It's stupid. Um, we used to be a society, you know, sticks and stones and I break my bones, but words will never hurt me. And we live in a day now, uh, if the wrong thing comes out of your mouth, you might be looking at a 20-year prison sentence. And that's just our sacrifice and our liberty to this politically correct agenda that they have going on. It's really sickening. You have to ask yourself why the news media would decide to pick this up and run with it, but not the two African-American armed soldiers, soldiers that we left at Bundy's door to guard his family. It's just, you know what I mean? How come they didn't cover that, but they covered this? So this agenda, they saw an opening to try to attack on the Navy. Yeah, I think that. I do have another question. Is the airspace still closed around the ranch? Yes, ma'am. Is it? Yes, it is. They've had a 30-day closure on it. I was there. Um, may, may I interrupt for a moment, Dwayne? I'm going to send you a message via instant message that I just received. Um, please look at it. Thank you. Okay. 
Um, we we were in, we called the uh, uh, the air traffic people to verify it, and it, it is still in place. They ordered it for 30 days, and it'll stay on for 30 days. Okay. Mm -hmm. And although you are seeing uh, airplanes going overhead, it's a certain height restriction. So I'm sure you're still seeing some going overhead, but within a certain height range. And Anything within that range is most likely, you know, militarily uh, working. If that makes sense, it could be local law enforcement as well, but it's no right, no commercial, no private. Mm, okay. Can I break in here for just a second? Is there any, um, Andrew, are you on the line of Keeper? I was looking for his number, Larry, and I did not see it. Um, let me look again. I'm texting, but uh, it's not coming through. Someone posted that crap about the drone strike, and for everybody to get, get out of uh, get out of uh, the area immediately, like three minutes ago on the newspaper stage, we know you got off of there. Yeah, it was just past the Mato. I passed it over. There's a clear attack that came from smoking marijuana or something like that, just a person drugging it in the interesting news. Yeah, but I know they want that up there. I'll, 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 take, I'll keep talking. Um, Larry? 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 I'm here, I'm here. Um, can you call him? Do you know how to? Yeah, yeah. I gotta jump off here. I'll go. I'll call him right now. Okay, thank you. Okay. Well, that's what I had. Thank you so much for taking my call. Thank you for calling in, and well, hopefully you'll stick around, and we'll talk to you in a little while. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Let's take the next caller in the queue. That is nine zero eight zero. Why do I know? I know that number. Hi there, caller. Who is this? Hey, this is Chris. Hi, Chris. <clears throat> How you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Oh, I'm doing good. I'm just kind of uh, just sitting back and uh, seeing what everybody has to say. And uh, I'm pretty impressed on uh, what everybody's, uh, everybody's uh, putting in so far. I just want to say, say thanks to everybody. Hey, Chris, have, you ever on board. have you ever met Blaine? Uh, no, I don't believe we have met before. I think we've maybe uh, shared a couple of uh, messages on Facebook. That's about it. But yeah, nice to be on the phone with you. Am yeah. I allowed to say your last name, Chris? Franz, K R A N Z. Chris, meet Blaine. Blaine, meet Chris. Hi, Chris. How are you doing? Doing pretty good, man. How are you? I'm hanging in there, just trying to get the, get the house back on the track in here. Yeah, I hear that. I hear that. Yeah, we're all just trying to do what we can, you know? Yes, sir. Chris, sure. was, Chris was kind enough to call us while he was out there, boots on the ground, and keep us informed. Yeah, I was able to uh, lend some time for a day, get to see what was going on, and get people some in, uh, good intel for the day. And uh, definitely doing what I can where I can from where I am right now. But uh, definitely trying to make it on my way back as well. Did you have any good questions for us tonight, Chris? Uh, no. Not exactly. You know, everybody's doing such a good job. I mean, I, you know, I'm really impressed with how uh, how intelligent everybody's remarks and, and uh, thoughts and points of view and um, connections are. And, uh, yeah, it's just a joy to be able to listen to people. So it uh, definitely helps me understand you know, as well. Well, thanks you very much, sir. I very much appreciate it. And again, I appreciate both of you and the time that you guys put in with us. I just can't say thank you enough. And I'm not just saying it for me. I'm saying it for the 
five, six, seven thousand callers that we've had all week long when we talk about you guys and we wish we were there with you guys and we strategize and we plan and we make sure you guys are safe and hey, oh Chris, do you wanna tell Blaine what you sent out there? Oh, I got a nice little sixteen by sixteen uh tent, military tent that I uh and it's gonna hit the road on Monday. <clears throat> for the base and everything. Wait, are you still on? Rain? Yeah, I was just gonna say your tongue sounded like it clicked. Yeah, I'm gonna see if my mouse is on Oh yeah, sometimes you lose connection, you know. It's the intel we come up with, I'm telling you. <laughs> Alright, well, Blaine, thank you for calling because I'm watching for a phone number to come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and if anybody. Yeah, so. I'm going to let you in here, Chris, I'm while Brian's here. here. Hi, Brian. Yeah, who's Blaine? Brian Cooper was on the phone with us. Yeah, I know. I, I was just curious if he was still there. I thought he turned out for a minute there. I think he did. I can't read the message. I can't read the message. He sent me a quick and I'm talking with a contact to John Shay. Okay, he's making sure that John said I'm not sure he's talking to someone right now. Yeah. Okay, they're verifying what you sent me on my messenger thing. Yeah. I won't say that. To me, it's just a fucking little 13 year old punch out yeah. kids joking with three inch penis. Probably. I just wouldn't have said it that way on the conference call, but it's okay. I'm sorry if I defended you. I mean, <laughs> I, work with, I work with thousands of men every day. I hear all these words out there. Amen. Okay. How about this? Well, we have all these callers here, and we have Chris here. Does anybody want to ask Chris any really good, juicy, detailed questions? He's willing to take. Oh, uh, Chris, you are willing to take a couple questions, right? Yeah, I can take a few. And he'll tell all all the private, juicy details you want to know. It is 11:29 Central Standard Time, so we are coming up on that midnight hour where we don't have to exactly be too good unless Brian Heller does it. Hey, Chris, I had a question. Is it true Michelle Obama is actually Michael Obama? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I Text me 
10 times a day and message me 20 and he's on top of everything, people. He's a good one to ask questions of. All right, give some feedback there. Um, if you guys can serve the background noise, if you want to mute yourself out, that's great. Hey, uh, is anybody up? Uh, I'm going to do it here in a minute. Is anybody up for or We can get a minute in to order a pizza to the uh, to the Bundy Ranch. Does anybody want to have one sent down there? Um, I'd like to get you some money. I've got a phone number to the pizzeria down there so you can call. You can place an order and have them send it right to that Bundy Ranch. I think it's Brian. Yeah, that's me. Okay, Brian, according to my note, uh, Buddha said they were having a huge barbecue, so they may be stuck. Okay, okay, we'll save that for another day. I love the idea, though. Yeah, but yeah. we get the great right idea now, for tomorrow. Awesome. I'll buy one myself. Yeah, I'm definitely getting a couple for them. Um, if yeah, anybody I'll else wants to. All right. Let's see, we'll look it up tomorrow night if anybody else wants to help out. Come in tomorrow. Hello? Yep, yeah. Hey, it's um, I just, I had uh, that alert for the, uh, you guys got that, that uh, thing going on about the drone strike it actually came from the, the Frontier, Frontiersman Militia. It's all the, uh, it's all uh, okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Why do people do that, man? Come on. Well, I think some people either do it or are scared of that tactic to try to break up the group over there to put fear in the people. Yeah, exactly. Just playing shit again. You yeah. yeah, I mean, gotta think if anybody says such a thing, it will be everywhere. Be everywhere. Yeah. Because there would be some cop shop reporter there to get get it on camera and be like, oh, look what Karen Fuller said. He's going to drone strike the bungee. You know what I'm saying? I can do that. I mean, it's not something that they can hide out. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's so hard to be good. That was a, a contact of mine with the old keepers as well, because they're trying to spin on it too. So I mean, just, just ignore it. Yeah. Hi, guys. Somewhere. Hey, uh, Andrew. Andrew. I'm on right now. I'm sorry, Andrew, what? Andrew, Andrew, are you there, sir? Sorry? Do you have the uh, last four digits of his number? I could uh, find him and unmute him. Yeah, I'm working on that. Okay. Uh, we've got uh, two more callers that just jumped in the queue as well. Larry, you're forever unmuted if we can, bro. Thanks, bro. Uh, 9080, do you have any more questions? Sorry about that. 9080, did you have any more questions? No, that, that'll be it for now. Thanks, buddy. Um, I'm going to try to keep you unmuted. There's a lot of background noise coming in off your end. You so, yeah. uh, All right. All right. 2105. 2105, you're engaged for the conversation. What's going on with you? I'm going to remute you, and then I'm going to unmute you because you're in the queue to speak. Uh, last four digits, 2105. Did you want to add anything to the conversation? Yeah, this is Michigan One here. I just want to hear you. Which frontiersman was it that posted that uh, misinformation on the OT site? We're uh, working on that and fighting for as we speak on it. Okay, we give me a name on that one. Uh, Barbie's got me on her friends list. So in my way, I can uh, get hold of the founder and have that rectified. Yeah, that would be a good hmm? That would be a great idea. I'd love to see that happen. Absolutely. All right. Okay. So Barbie's got me. Just try to leave me see what on there on Facebook. Let me know, and I'll get a hold of the founder and let him know that, hey, you need to disseminate better on information before put it out. Hmm. Can you get a hold of Stuart? Uh, I think I asked Stuart. <clears throat> Where are you in here? 
I've hit him up on Facebook. He's got somebody running that phone. I'm trying to find somebody who could get him on the phone. He's on his way to Vegas right now. Seeing as we're on more of a boring part anyway, I've been on eternal mute and not able to get back through. I am going to try calling Barbie's cell number. Hello? Hey, Barbie, this is Dave. I've been on eternal mute forever and ever and ever. Amen. Any way I could get back into participation? If I can, I'm on mute. <laughs> you are? Yes. I thought you were moderating. No, Brian is. I'm on mute. I can't even get this guy's name. I got his phone number down, but I don't know who it is. Hmm. Well, that's weird. Um... Do you have Brian's number? Because I know I do, and I could attempt to call him, even though it'll probably go to voicemail. Hello? 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 Hmm. That's interesting. I will attempt to call Brian. Let's see here. Hey Brian, this is Dave. Um, neither me nor Barbie can get back on the call. Just thought you might want to know. <laughs> Although you'll probably get this message like five minutes after we sit down for coffee tomorrow. But just, you know, putting it out there anyway. All right, bye. And now we bring you back to your scheduled stuff. Uh, basically, his bodyguard called to say that he was in his clothes. It looks like he must have gone to bed a little early, but the bodyguards that were just there with him were letting us kind of know what was going on. It's been pretty calm. The uh, had a barbecue going on now at this point um, over on the uh, Second Amendment group. Okay, well, that was freaking interesting. Now the Skype call just, like, completely shit out, totally, just dropped, gone. Gotta love all these little technical, the freaking difficulties here. I'm going to dial back, one moment. Very, very freaking interesting. <laughs> Let's see. Two seven six one two five is the pin. This service is provided in high definition by free conference call HD dot com. Please enter your access code.
Access code accepted. There are 27 participants in this conference. This conference is being recorded. Q&A session started. Still quite a few, and more are still coming in. If you'd like to ask, your request has been received. Or, you know, if you, you know, bring, bring whatever you want to come as peaceful protesters. Um, you know, the permanent groups, that'll be great. You'll know, be able to sustain yourselves. If you've got extra supplies to share, that's great. There's a list of what they need. Um, uh, Barbie's actually gone ahead and kind of taken over that project. And uh, we've got uh, a whole line set up for like Walmart. If we, they've got a wish list that they have up there uh, that we're able to help support them that way. And then we've got a friend close by that's been going back and forth between Walmart and the ranch and dropping stuff off for them uh, every day, sometimes twice a day. Do they still have a SWAT out there around them? I'm sorry, do they have what? Any type of SWAT or police uh, force out there still around them? As far, as far as we know, as far as what we just heard, there is not a lot of activity with like military police. They've had a couple of flyovers that they you know reported on, but outside of that, nothing uh, nothing extreme. Okay. What about the veterans groups? Are there, are there any veterans groups out there? Because I mean, I'm a veteran myself, you know, and I. Just wondering if they're out there, let themselves be known, and yeah, I mean, there's tons of don't want to do that, right? Well, there's tons of them out there. Uh, just suck up their benefits for the VA because they are the VA is already a bunch of asses, you know, right. and uh, they also, you know, they get dig dig in your personal life pretty much. So I mean, if they find out, you know, veterans are involved, up there, they'll probably be a little bit of campaign prosecution for it, but you know what I mean? So I just like, you know, if you know there are veterans out there, tell them. Kind of keep it as a, you know, low. <laughs> Don't let them know that they're veterans. Gag, did you get Blaine back on the line yet? I don't think Blaine is back on. And uh, my last question now is, uh, has anybody heard about anything, any kind of support groups or anything going out to the rancher in Oklahoma, uh, Texas border? That the BLM is pretty much doing the same thing to them? I'm sure if he puts the call up, there would be a reaction. If anything, I'd like to, you know, get a hold of that guy and see what needs to be done and what phase they're in. Obviously, this yeah, I, situation, you know. I've actually, uh, I've contacted uh, a couple of local militias around here, but I guess these guys don't really get on their Facebook much, and I've tried emails, haven't gotten a reply on those yet, it's been about a week, you know, I mean, I support money in his cause too, but I just hate to see someone that's going through the exact same struggle to be so ignored, you know what I mean? Right, getting the short end of the stick, no notification, no assistance whatsoever. On a very yeah. similar, you know, someone like that, they, they need to speak out. They need to put a call out. You know, there's plenty of guys in that region that didn't make it to uh, Nevada. Um, I'm sure there's plenty that would stand forward. So he, he let, let this guy know he needs to come forward and explain the situation. I'm sure people will react, and we'd be happy to uh, watch this the same way that we've done for the Bundy. Yep, exactly. I'm in the uh, DFW area in Fort Worth, and I'll tear her ass right up there. It's an hour and a half away from me. So where do you say this guy is? Uh, he's on the uh, Texas Oklahoma Fort I don't have the actual town per se right now, but uh, I think I can look it up. I had an in-depth conversation with some uh, someone about it, uh, actually from uh, the Republic of Rise Again on Facebook. We were talking about it. I don't know if it was. Is this Brian? Yeah, yeah. Uh, were you the one I was speaking with about it on Facebook? Um, yeah, I mean, if you came to, I've been talking to a lot of people about a lot of things. So. Uh, it was about a week ago when I was talking to you about, uh, it called a good one, I told you about tipping point with Boone Cutler, and then I also started talking to you about uh, this Oklahoma, Texas thing. Out of hundreds of messages, I apologize for not being able to recall that at this moment. Um, 
most likely it's in my long, long, long list of messages that I've been sent in the last few weeks. Some <laughs> if I haven't gotten back to them right away, I apologize for that, but uh, uh -huh. feel, uh, feel free to resend it. We'll definitely look into it. Um, yeah, it's no uh, big deal. And of course, like everything I'm looking at is, is uh, they don't, it's obviously around the Red River area, um, can't really find a location like an actual city or town. Probably held lands, needed properties. Ah, okay. All right, it went new in Ohio. <laughs> oh, Callahan. Or, yeah. Okay. Anyways, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what uh, what town it was. Shit. Yeah. But it, it's goddamn is uh, Tom name that's uh, in the dispute with BLM on the Texas Oklahoma border is Tommy Henderson. Um, right. We'll look for him. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, man, I just, like I said, I uh, hope some, uh, you know, I wish somebody would with better means be able to contact me without itself, you know. Um, I don't know I'd care. I'd sit there and help out. Yeah, if you find any more on how to contact this guy, I'd be happy to do that and maybe he could uh, get some people out his way to help him out. So hopefully, you know, it's really going to be up to him to do that, though, if, it, if the situation is critical, just like what happened with the Bundy Ranch, so hopefully uh, people react the same way. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure this dude wants to, wants to help. I, just, I don't think he knows about how going out. Ah, knows about how... Ah. Knows how to go about it. So get the help from, I guess, the people he wants to get it from. I don't know. If, you know but if somebody that knows how to actually, you know, do a little bit of investigation, which I'm, which I suck at. I mean, if somebody knows how to do a little bit better investigation than I do, then it'd be awesome if they could contact them and, you know, let them know there are people out there that are willing to go out there and support him as much as they would support money in them. Can you have him get in touch with me, sir? Tommy Anderson? Yeah, I'm really good at digging up stuff. No, I, that's what I'm saying. I, I don't have any way, no contact towards them or anything. I'm just saying, I'm, I've read articles where, you know, from what, I'm, from what I see, he's pretty pissed off and he's trying to speak the same thing. That's what I mean by my yeah, investigation. Yeah, Barbie, we might have to reach out to him. Yeah, I think you should. I think so too, as well. But um, yeah. So, but uh, that's a, that's all I have to say, man. I, I'd like you know somebody to be able to get a group together to go out there because I I joined from day one. Yeah, Oklahoma's got a bunch ton of guys. It would be nice to see Oklahoma handle this, you know. Yeah, well, I think it's actually on the Texas border side. I'm not too sure. Well, Texas uh, has 10 times as many times. <laughs> is that near the Red River area? Yes. Okay, there's a whole bunch going on with that. You're going to be having some backup next week. Okay. All right. We, um, if you get a chance to come on tomorrow um, in the evening, if you can tell me what time you'll be here. We have a lady who is running for the governor of Texas, and she can fill you in on a whole bunch of stuff about that. What would be her name? Becky Williams. Okay. You can add her on Facebook. I actually think I already have her on there. I was just, uh, so with, uh, Wendy Davis, I've been kind of upset. I'll just quit calling y'all. <clears throat> Oh no! Don't quit calling. <laughs> I'd, I'd have to completely just move, like remove myself. Can't stand that woman. But uh, all right, yeah, cool. Anyways, thank you. Um, yeah, I can call in. I guess about uh, 8 p.m. tomorrow, 8 or 9 p.m. tomorrow. 
Okay, and I'll get I'll get to work on that homework and seeing if I can make a contact with him. That'd be fantastic. All righty. Thank you very much for calling in. And do you have any other questions? No, ma'am. That'd be all. All right. I'm going to disengage you so we can get to the next caller. And 3171, you are now engaged, 3171. 3171. Hey, Barbie. Hey, how are you tonight? Uh, I've had a pretty rough day, actually. I haven't been feeling too great, but uh, uh, I, just, I was wondering if I could get a meet. Uh, it was said that Ivan might be chiming, uh, chiming in tonight. Uh, well, circumstances beyond our control prevented that from happening, but we will put out a confirmation the next time we hear that he could possibly be coming. We are going to try for tomorrow, but there's no confirmation yet. Okay. Um, and as far as the Texas rancher, uh, uh, who is the fellow, what was his handle? The man, the guy that he was just talking to asking him if, uh, if we were going to go support the uh, Texas rancher and or Sandman and things like that. <laughs> I didn't get a name. He'll be here tomorrow. You want to come on we'll talk around the ATM? I'm I'm talking to him on my page right now. I messaged him as soon as I heard him talking about talking to me a little you know, a week ago. Um that was me by the way. This is uh High One slash O'Congole from the Republic Right again. Um I'm more than willing to work with anyone that wants to put the call out for militia mobilization to go aid this man and uh, keep the BLM from taking his ranch as well. Um, there's also a couple more land drives going on, and if it would if it be possible, if we could get mobilization to every single one of these to get, you know, an actual space, you know, to get a presence to, you know, sit there and get the you know get the BLM to understand we will not back down no matter where mm -hmm. the situation is. I agree with you. Ohio when you know how to get a hold of me, I'm gonna work on getting a hold of getting the contact information for this man. And as soon as I do, me and you'll see I'm talking figure out plan, okay? Alrighty, adoptive Madra, I will get a hold of you here <laughs> in a little bit. Alrighty, wonderful son adopted. <laughs> All right. You guys have a good one. You too. Thanks for calling. I know you'll be sticking around now. Definitely. All right. And we have another caller here sitting on the line that would like to say hi. I'm hoping. Uh, I can't get to it. I know exactly the problem you're having right now. Uh-huh. And this is the only way I can remedy it. Uh, three, four, eight, two, you've been on hold for a minute. Hey, Brian, this is call center girl. I just have a question about Walmart thing, and it's probably not true, but you guys will know if it is or not, so that's why I'm going to ask you before I, you know, say anything. Um, basically, with the comments, even though I know they weren't true, I mean, I'm a, you know, 100% um, supporter of Clive and Bunny, 100%, like, that's just, you know, goes without saying, but what I heard right. from work, what? I, I'm agreeing, go ahead. Okay, <laughs> I can't hear it through my cell phone, it's all jacked up. Um, but basically the only question I had about the whole Walmart thing um, is the fact that I, of course, I heard through the grapevine um, that uh, because of his comments and this and that, that Walmart was going to cease like doing any kind of like delivery operation, da, da, da. First of all, I just want to know if that's not true. Second of all, if it's not, is Jessica still going to be the person to go pick stuff up for us? Or have you heard anything about Walmart ceasing ties or is that not true? I got it, Brian. No, it's not true. That was somebody in here just having a rant, and we had no way of getting control of the room at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw it on Facebook. Somebody had posted it, like, on a news website, and like I said, I don't remember where it was. Now it was on Facebook. I'm like, oh, God, that's not good. So that's why I just wanted to verify, you know, one way or the other. Yeah. Jessica is still our pickup person. She still has the wedding registry up so that 
If you don't want to do it through Walmart.com, you can log on to the wedding registry and Walmart will deliver it out to the ranch. Okay. All right. I'm going to go ahead and mute out. That's all I wanted to know. <laughs> all righty. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What's uh-oh? We didn't do the disengage, but she disappears. But that was cool. Okay. All right. Hey, uh, earlier that song that I played, Bobby, did that come through okay? Yes, it did. It's a pretty cool song, right? I thought it was a good one, but uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else want to chime in? You can. You could just press. We could uh, get you in here in the call. Unfortunately, uh, Blaine had to go and. That would be that. Well, since we are down to just 29 callers, do you mind if we take the Q and A off? Um, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Now we can hold off for a second if anybody else wants to chime in. They're more than welcome to. Yeah, it is getting kind of low, kind of late. Yeah, and we can hand, we can handle sixty without the Q and A. So I mean, all right, let's. Uh, Your conference recording has stopped. This conference is being recorded. Q and A session is over. Good luck with that, Barbie. No problem. Okay, everybody, you is eleven fifty eight p.m. You are in an open, unmoderated conference call. If you can hit star six to mute out your mic or press mute on your cell phone. Anyone who does not mute out, I will mute. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys are wonderful. This line is now on hold. <laughs>
using the restroom facilities and suddenly I come back up and there's all this repetitive, repetitive off-tune music that's sounding like a lovesick moose in heat and um, I don't know what's going on or where anybody went so I'm just kind of going to kind of wait a minute and then if there's just this repetitive God only knows what this is I walked into that keeps going on and on for all eternity on then and then I'll just call it a night. <laughs> so, let's see what happens. <laughs> Thank you. 
going to try disconnecting and reconnecting the call. Maybe it was some crazy glitch or something. I have no freaking idea what I just walked into. 276125. This service is provided in high definition by free conference call hd.com. Please enter your access code by Access code accepted. There are 26 participants in this conference. This conference is being recorded. Please announce yourself. Can you please explain to the open room why people start these types of rumors? You know, you explained it earlier. Brian said that he gives you permission to say it again. Am I audible? <laughs> oh, yeah. I said earlier, but people are starting rumors to separate people. I get them in a frenzy and panic to get them out of the situation to run. For example, they just want people to they want to be mass at risk and have anyone fleeing the Bundy uh, to go ahead and flee out there. It could also be a, like maybe a 13 year old kid in their home smoking dope, doing something and just having fun on the computer and not knowing what they're doing. Um, rumors are rumors, and if someone can make a post or statement on somebody's website, um, First of all, the first oath keepers just then shut off all the comments and approve the comments before they're allowed to be posted publicly. I have a several different blogs. We put the zoom in too. We monitor all our things. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I said the three percenters do too. We monitor all our sites. You can't. Nothing gets through without admin posting it. So. Exactly. The admin should go ahead and allow that. I have a few blogs that I run myself on other situations and things which have nothing to do with it's more on legal matters and military right. legal matters and I only, I'm, I'm the one only authorized to go on there and add This line is now on hold What in the hell? That's what it is. Line on hold <laughs> I keep getting put on frickin' hold. That's weird. I'm going to call back This service is provided in high definition by free conference call hd.com. Access code accepted. There are 26 participants in this conference. This conference is being recorded. Please announce yourself. I apologize for interrupting, but I keep getting put on hold, and I keep getting this call, uh, this call music and stuff, and it's really messing up the, the YouTube stream here. Um, I don't know if someone's doing this on purpose or what. Before that, I was on mute for all freaking eternity. I mean, if this is going to keep happening, I'm just, I'm just going to shut down the stream. There's no point in continuing to stream it out. Just saying. Sorry to interrupt, but... Been crazy over here in this end. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. I'm just on myself. Well, well, Barbie, it, it was weird because I actually a little bit ago I called your cell phone and someone claiming to be you said that they weren't on the line either and and that you I were wasn't. okay. And then all of a sudden I come back and like you're on the line and I'm like wait a minute she's on the line and, and announcing herself as Barbie but she said she wasn't on the line. What kind of time warp am I doing here? Then I go downstairs to the bathroom. I come back up and there's this crazy music. I thought Brian was playing music. I ended up being on hold music. So I, I shut it down. I called back. Then you uh, you guys were there again. Then I got on the hold music again, shut it down, called back. I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> And you get to the whole, but uh, we also drink, and for three nights, 
and music was put on hold. Everyone agreed to music on hold. Mm. That was kind of really bad. Okay. Brian was nice enough to point out to everybody how much of an airhead I am, and that I could unmute myself, and I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I don't know if I was even showing up in queue or what, but here's my question. Why did I end up going back on hold again? Because I, I mean, well, I had to disconnect the call the first time to come back to then hear you guys in mid-conversation. Had I not done that, the stream would have been broadcasting on hold music forever and ever and ever on then until Google shut it down. Then I reconnect, I announce myself, then I get immediately put on hold music again, again so the disconnect, call back, and now I'm like, all right, I'm not taking the polite route. I'm just going to burst out with full explanation, and if people want to get mad at me for it, whatever. But, you know, I'm just like, enough is enough. <laughs> well, um, let me see if I can get Brian. Wait a minute, guys. I don't think Brian can keep it on. Brian, where are you? Maybe he's Brian. asleep like <laughs> I should be, seeing as he's going to be meeting me for lunch tomorrow. Uh, sooner or later, it's going to be ham radio anyway. All right, um, This is quarter to one. Yeah, I'm going to have Here's what I found. I think that the person that said that the other day, I think they might have had it confused because this right, what I found that reads anything about Georgia, it says that the BLM, Texan land, slash Georgia governor signs extreme. No, oh, wait a minute. That's the wrong one. I'm sorry. That's the governor of Georgia that signed his guns everywhere law. That was awesome. No, no, no. Yeah. Hold on. Hey, I'm Dave. Sorry. Hey, what? Hey, What's up? You what? know what I bet it was? What? I bet it was the same oh, shit that happened to me the other day. I bet it was the NSA and the FTC shut me down. I'll bet on it. Good, man. Here's what it is. It says the LM, and then after the LM, it says Texas land, Georgia governor's final yeah. string gun bill. Christy goes to Florida to escape New Jersey drama, and it's all together yeah. in one big old damn... Uh, well, if they, if they think my big mouth is if they think my big mouth is that important, then that's that's a first. <laughs> well, uh, I I know that Georgia the Georgia governor did sign that bill. She she runs everywhere, and uh, a governor Christie runs to Florida. He's coming to the wrong place. So he's sort of like him down here. So, but uh, anyway. Um, I don't know. There is nothing going on for land grabbing. We're not here to not That's all I can say. Um, the gentleman next to the slide, at, not Florida one, the one that's talking about the militia and 700 plus members down in Florida. Would you mind adding me on Facebook? I have family in Palm Coast, so it's very, very heavy patriots. I'm also from Florida, but I'm in Georgia, stationed in Georgia. Okay, you also friend me too? Because I'm in the can we, uh, can we get everybody's Facebook name or whatever? I don't know okay, and mine is Kristen, K-R-I-S-T-E-N. K-R-I-S-T-E-N. Hispanic. That's Sierra, Papa, Alpha, November, India, Charlie. Sierra, Alpha, say that again. Sierra, Papa, Alpha, November, India, Charlie. Okay, thank you. And who was the other gentleman who wanted me to be showing them around there? It's Barbie. Florida. Yeah, well, go ahead, Barbie. Barbie L. Rogers. Barbie like a Barbie doll. L, and then Rogers. R O G E R S. Thank you. Um, do, do, my profile do, picture is a penis holding up the sign. Are we all just fucking nuts? <laughs> and I'm Dave Kelso, K-E-L-S-O. And if you go to the community conference calls well, Facebook page and click on About, you'll see me and Brian both listed as the page owners on there. Obviously, I'm the guy who isn't Brian. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's, can you spell your last name again, Dave? K-E-L? K-E-L-S-O. Okay, I can be down. Yeah, I'll be there. Sir, what, is, what is your handle on Facebook? 
Oh, I'm sorry. I have Mike Toller 3. Mike Toller mm -hmm. 3. Or Mike Toller, T-O-L-L-A-R. 3. The 3, uh, there's like 3, like, you know, to a third. But it stands for three. Okay, the um, Roman numeral 3. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, it's not really Roman numeral. It's just 3 slashes standing for 3%. Mm -hmm. Can't put a Roman number in <laughs> Although <laughs> this is Orlando, Florida. Although on the conference calls here, uh, Brian calls me Chicago One. <laughs> what? Say again, Sash. S A C H E. S A C H E. Uh, well, you all find you all find me. My name is easy enough, and it's short. <laughs> it's my last name. My first name's James, and I have a yellow profile picture that says okay. "Don't Tread on Me." So we got James Shaft, Christian, Satanic, B L I D, Danny Kelso. Okay. Anybody else out there that we'd like to add it in his group so we can get everybody out and forward and know what's going on a little bit better too from the whole front? Red Leader standing by. Uh, it's uh, time to write from the top of the rise again. Okay, can everybody hold on for one moment? Please? Sure. Um, there, was a, there was a lady caller and she was speaking very quietly. Could you please speak again, ma'am? This is God, and I do have a British accent. Where did I leave that new button? Oh, I think a peanut took it from you. It might have. They know I'm allergic to them. I used to be yeah. for seven years, but then my genetics changed back, and I wasn't anymore. Yay. But what do you think the um, Yolan is really after the Bundy Ranch? Do you think it's because of Harry Reid's son tied with the um, solo plant out in China? No. Two word answer, no. Agenda 21. Read it, live it, study it, learn it. Looking at me on Facebook, it's just some a redheaded girl. It's um, Leslie L E S L I E, and last name is Brown, like the color. And I'm in Columbus, Ohio. And she wants to be called Bo Peep, not call center girl, because we leave the center out and call her call girl. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, Leslie's uh, Leslie's already a friend on my list, so I've already got her. I was weird now tonight because yeah, when. Um, the speaker site. I was listening because I'm at work, and I um, was listening on the radio or the radio, the YouTube. And um, basically, when I went to the speaker site, all of a sudden everything just drained out, and all I heard was somebody typing and breathing on the phone on the speaker site, and that was it. Nothing more. It's like they muted the conference call, and they were just typing and typing, and that was it. <laughs> That was just the big heavy set NSA guy looking at porn, and he just like hit a wrong button. Uh -huh. Oh come on, <laughs> it's not that time yet. No talking about that till four o'clock. Hey, um, Leslie, does your does your um verified red head was that uh, in parentheses in your name? Oh, that's me. Yeah. Okay, I'm Christian. I'm adding you. Yeah, I did. I had to add that I added verified celebrity account underneath mine because I busted out two fake pages: the Amy Adams girl from American Hustle, and then the Steve, Steve Peter Cavill or Cavill, whatever from the um, America uh, Man of Steel movies. And it turns out both accounts were fake, but they had that um, subtitle that said verified celebrity account underneath parentheses, or they had verified, you know, celebrities official. And I said, aha, not so fast. Just look at my picture, and I tweet. 
um, I tweaked my own account to say verified celebrity account. If you go to my photo album on Facebook, you'll see how I tweaked my account and then took a snapshot of it. And I went on both of those pages and posted how I did it. And within 24 to 48 hours, they both had canceled their pages because they knew I busted them out because they were fake. Hey, Bo Peep, if you can stop long enough to take a breath. Um, the speaker thing was Brian's. So grab a whip and next time he comes out, have it handy. <laughs> hey, um, Leslie, I have a, I have a page where I expose people that are fake offers. I had a woman saying that she was a um a uh, gold star recipient's wife, and <laughs> she was going around posting pictures and getting people to fight and what have you. She had a six hundred friends name was Tony Gregory, and people are trying to bust her for a couple of years. I ended up busting her in thirty minutes. I know, right? It's not hard. Once you figure out what they did, it's easy to copycat it and bust them out. Because not soon after I did that with the, uh, oh, his name was Henry. Henry Cavill must be the actual, the real British guy that plays in the new Man of Steel movies. And um, as soon as I did that, I went back to his page. After he saw that I busted him out, he actually removed that celebrity account from his subtitle. I'm like, aha, uh -huh, see? <laughs> Not so bright, are you, there, crayon box? Oops, I got phone calls. I got to mute out. Hold on. my pages on Facebook. I'm having a blonde moment. Please hold. The next available Barbie will be with you momentarily. Your call is important to us. You are 1,569 in queue to be answered. Your estimated wait time is one year, six months. I'm just kidding. Oh, <laughs> Wish that happens to me. Now, cool. Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> Hi, Kermit, Kermit D. Frog here, and today on Sesame Street, we have Barbie L. Rogers. And don't forget, star nine for the ladies of the line. Only three ninety nine per minute, adults only. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget, John, you can't your back pocket now to have that wallet. You open that wallet and grab that little nice black card. I'm reading your numbers from left to right. Just look down and then you give me the expiration date. Now flip that card over there, you want to flip me over, and you give me the CBS code. We, 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 we accept Visa, MasterCard, American Express, and Harry Reid's mom. I'm sorry, Visa. Your card was declined. <laughs> That's Harry Reid for you. <laughs> Harry balls on your read. Oh, my mom looks like a miserable old man. Well, he's also known as uh, the man with the face who looks that looks like a melted candle. Mm. He's most likely just a baby, so funny. He hasn't had a woman since like a water game. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure he's a Korean war? Dude, he hasn't had a woman since the Christmas truce. Mm. Okay, y'all, we're not monopolizing the conversation. There is 35 other people on the line. These people are on the line. That means. Y'all know what the Christmas truce is, right? Dave, glad to meet you. 
No, I was just asking if you knew what the Christmas yeah. truce was. I'm like, who would procreate with that thing? <laughs> Call girl. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's my name. A female member of its species, perhaps? So it's uh, Sean Henry and actually because I used to look into them a lot. I'm going to meet you. <coughs> so. Yeah, well, I'm trying to hear if these people turned off their TV. Oh, my God, I didn't hear that. I know, you keep talking over me. <laughs> it's late, I'm sorry. Okay, that one did not turn off the TV. I'll be leaving soon because I gotta meet up with Brian for lunch tomorrow. And help uh, if I wasn't half you. asleep. That makes eight times that you have said that tonight. <laughs> well, we got things to do. It sounds to me like somebody's bragging. <laughs> Uh huh. Uh huh. Clutch it, didn't Yeah, because he's just such a superstar. That's okay. He can be a superstar because I'm fantastic. I'm worthy. Now you know what? He'll be a superstar once Harry Reid gets up there and says that Brian guy. He's a domestic terrorist. <laughs> I was actually in my office, and a soldier's wife walked into my office. She says, um. I'm here to find out where my husband's house was. I'm like, ma'am, I can't give you that information. And after repeating myself three times, I stood up and walked away. She grabbed my arm. I said, ma'am, you lose my arm. And then she goes up and grabs my arm again. I just walked away from her. Grabs my shoulder, sits me in my chair, and holds me. And I was like, seriously, I just punched her. And my dear comes up and she says, um, my dear says to her, um, you should be safe and do what you're doing now and be charged with domestic, a domestic terrorist attack against the, um, I'm just telling you what's up with me. I'm dropping it. <laughs> what the hell? You tried to walk out of a room and they wanted to charge you with domestic terrorism for walking no, 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 out? No, not me, not me, but the police, the civilian, civilian act. Um, oh, so you said that to her? No, yeah, my CEO said that to her. Oh, okay, because like my brain isn't totally with the full context of the story. <laughs> that just sounded a little confusing, but so who is this woman? It was a uh, it was a soldier's wife. Oh. Hi there, welcome to the call. This is Barbie. How may I help you? Larry Murdoch. Yeah, can I get a large bag of everything? I knew he was going there. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> yes, but Larry has permission to go down. You know, I won't take that out of context. Uh, too late. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you've gotten a few cheap shots in on me today. I just figured I'd return fire. I just bided my time. Yes, but it wasn't me that got the shots in on you. Uh-huh. It was that other one in the parallel universe. <laughs> hey, Larry, tell him, did not Brian 
point me out to be in a stupid blonde because I couldn't unmute myself when I hung up the phone and called back in. I know you. I know we pointed it out. <laughs> See, told you. I was sitting in the queue waiting for him to unmute me. <coughs> but that's slander against blondes, because not all blondes are stupid. Okay, then I was being a stupid brunette. <laughs> but I'm still fantastic. I agree. She's a Barbie girl in a Barbie world, taking phone oh, calls. God. <laughs> I'm concerned about that Russian lady that claimed that she was the real life Barbie doll. She just makes my skin crawl. Oh, it's just because everybody's jealous because that Barbie bitch got it all. <laughs> I think she did a really good job. I mean, if, you, if you're going to go all out, she went all out. Yeah, she did. It's scary, though. <laughs> Luckily, I'm only five foot half an inch tall. Way too short to even try it. <laughs> we see these people they they put they, they install filters in their heads and they pierce like everything and all this new jagged teeth and all this crazy stuff. I, mean, I wouldn't do it, but to look at it, you go, okay, you, you got to give them credit. That's that's too bad. Out. I've never you seen know. this person that you're talking about. You never seen these people? No, the the, the real life no. Barbie doll. Oh oh. oh. Look, Google that shit, man. Google that shit, as Brian would say. Sounds creepy. She looks yeah. more. Me, she looks more like an anime than Barbie, but you know, either way, she did a really good job. It, it really like. Um, excuse me, is Brian on at all? Nope, nothing no, we know me, of. No, this is Barbie. Is there anything I can help you with? Um, it's Sherry from Montana here. Um, there's Hi, Sherry. Stuff. How are you doing? Um, just wondering, there's um. We think that the Oath Keepers uh, page has been hacked, but there's stuff being spread like wildfire on the internet about the Bundy Ranch going to be droned. Yes, ma'am, that, that's a rumor. It's not true. And if you go back and refresh the Oath Keepers page, it has been drawn off of it. It has been taken down off the Oath Keepers site. Okay, yeah, I tried to get a hold of the admin there and tell them, you know, either verify or take it down, one of the two, like, we all thought it was a hack, but yeah. um, we're just trying to make sure that it was, and this is my faithful number. <laughs> yeah, that was that was verified as being a load of dung. Okay, I just wanted to make sure before I go ahead and say, yeah, uh, it totally is, I thought it was, but yeah. uh, Right. Usually this yeah. is where I turn to for my verification. We were also joking around that if it was true, Eric Holder would be up there bragging about it. For Obama himself, right? Yeah. I got the button and I got the pen. I got two um, words for you. Predator drones. You think I'm joking? <laughs> okay. You'll never you'll never okay. see it coming. <laughs> Freaking idiot. <laughs> And then you get a bunch of idiots on there that, you know, as soon as they see it, they share it 50 times and it's 50 more times. But, I mean, I don't know where we're getting, um, you know, we're getting stuff on here where they're the coordinator, uh, I'm director of the organization for uh, Oath Keepers out of Houston, and she's the one on here spreading this shit. It's like, we don't want to know it. It's on, it's on Twitter, it's posted that a, uh, um, Trudy Stanberry and a Sherry Martin. Um, well, you know what I'm going to tell you to do, right? Tweet that well, shit back and <laughs> tweet, tweet back to that shit and say, this is false information. Stop spreading it. Well, you know what? They, they put it up here, and then they have nowhere for anybody to comment that's not their friend. Right. You know, and that's what really pisses me off. Because if you're going to put this crap up there, at least have somebody somewhere to say this is bullshit. Yeah, exactly. You, know, you email them and anybody PM them and it goes to the other folder. I doubt <clears> if they even know how to check it. Yeah, exactly. Like for my Facebook page, for my YouTube channel, uh, Paradigm Shift in Educational Comedy, um, 
I don't uh, I don't censor what goes up there, but at the same time, I'm always telling people this is just data being presented. If it's bullshit, call it, but don't take anything as gospel. We're just sharing what's here so that people can discuss it. We are not some sort of news site saying, hey, this is all the truth. We're just putting information out on the table to discuss it. And I'm always telling people, if an independent, independent media place says it, don't just out, outright believe it. Don't outright believe the mainstream. Don't outright believe anything. Check into things. Sure. Somebody wants to add something to this. You know, I like to keep my stuff when I put it up yeah. to make sure that I verify, tell them where I've got my verification yeah. from, and tell them if they'd like to check yeah. it out themselves, they can do that. Yeah. Them. Someone wants so, to add to this. I heard someone trying to add to this. Who was trying to? No, we were not. Okay, go ahead. Okay, well, if you really think about it, now, if there's a, a, a rumor or whatever, a confirmation, there's going to be a muted 48 hours. Does that mean something about no, it was it was somebody else that was feeding back to their their speakers and their mic. Okay. Yeah. You saw the conference host has muted the conference. This line cannot be unmuted. So that I don't have to mute you. Unmuted. Now, what's the chance <laughs> of anything like that actually being even close to accurate? As far as the federal government is going to do drone strike, and they're going to go ahead and say in 48 hours. You know, like, how could you possibly get that information? And even if you didn't, so, so let's say that was true. Now it's spread all over the Internet. Now, how do they not see that, oh, well, jigs up, they figured out that we're going to do this, we must have them all or whatever. You know what I mean? And then, why would they do something like that? Because that would just bring down the entire federal government, like, within the state. Agreed. You know what I mean? Agreed. Okay. Yes, dear. <laughs> well, you guys have a good evening. I'm going back to business here. Okay. To tune everybody up to the truth. Thank you. I appreciate right, that. You guys. Okay. Hey, Barbara. Yes. Um, this isn't uh, federally related. Well, I guess it is, but uh, I'd like to now announce um, Alex. And Nikki and his wife Ashley, a very happy marriage. They got married today on the Bundy Ranch. Oh, cool! Yay! No, I, think it, I think it was yesterday. Oh, was it yesterday? Yeah. Either way, like, congratulations for sure. Yes, congratulations. I guess uh, he sported his militia camo, and she sported the. Traditional white gown. Cool. And, hey, Chris. Chris or Chris? No, Chris. Where are you, Chris? Did you leave us? Chris, you want me? Everybody muted himself again. No sound. I'm hungry. Yeah. Chris left us. I hear a kitty kitty. This might be true. That might be true. This might be verified. It might not be verified. One of these days, something's going to happen when you aren't looking, and you are just going to, you know, you're going to cause more harm than good. You're going to end up hurting the bunnies more than you think you're helping them, and that just goes out to like whoever is like spreading the rumors or whatever. I can guarantee you, whoever's spreading the rumors is not on this thing, on this conference call. Oh, I probably yeah. So hollering at us is absolutely no good. <laughs> <laughs> it, it makes our ears hurt. It makes us want to go, yeah. and, uh, watch. Let me show you what it's like. Watch. watch this. No, don't do it. Muted. Unmuted. Now, some people just want to start rhetoric just because they really, really Muted. I mean, how many Americans do you think? Unmuted. And, and anybody else was sitting there when they were watching the, the you know, the, the final standoff at the Bundy Ranch going, Fire, come on, bring this on, let's go, let's get this started. You know, you know what I mean? It's like they want to 
that kind of uh, destruction going on. They want that conflict. Yeah, I, I've I've run into some people who have been very kind of ticked off at the at the idea that um, so far peace is peaceful methods have prevailed more powerfully than um, violent method because they got this worldview paradigm that you know battle rattles the only, the only way to go. So it's like when they see that that peaceful methods can actually be more efficient, they're getting all like butt hurt and pissed off and just like whining at me and I'm just like well you know whatever <laughs> well I can understand that I mean I didn't buy all these guns and ammo you know, <laughs> you know, the Bundy Ranch is not a good idea because they're very peaceful people, people. Yeah. but you know I'm kind of like anytime ATF wants to come knock on my door come on let's just get it over with you know eventually you guys are going to be here anyway well, the reason to have guns is so that we don't have to use them. Um, it's the logic of a shark is not going to go after a oh whale. Oh my God, are you serious? A shark is not going to go after a whale. A shark is going to go after a prey that that you know it can attack. Yeah. So if yeah. you're a, if you're too too big for the shark's britches, then the shark's going to stay away from you, and that's the point of guns. Well, we're seeing that over and over again with uh, with the weirdo. Uh, uh, riot police they kill. There's nothing going on, so they'll just go out and slam somebody to the ground. Yeah. Usually it's a little girl. You know, just get this value. Yeah, no kidding. They that's, really wanted it. Yeah, that's sick. That's really... Uh, you know, I once... There, there was one some... I was having, we're having an hey, argument. Wait a minute. Hey, What's wait up? A minute. I'll tell you something. I have a gun because I'm going to shoot it. If I pull my gun on you, you can damn sure bet you're going to be dead. You can stand 50 feet away from me and have a raisin, raisin purged on the tip of your nose, and I can shoot that raisin off of it. That's hard. I walk over to your house with a raisin on my nose. But to, um, to um, in agreement with what uh, this gentleman was saying, um, in the not too distant past, I had this like really you know nasty neighbor. Thankfully, she got evicted. But you know we were having an argument out front and stuff. Needless to say, you things were. Uh, uh, no, I live in Chicago. But think. Um, anyway, so um, as I was saying, thing, things were uh, resolving peacefully and interestingly enough. But the cops uh, ended up getting called out there. And, when the cops arrived on the scene and saw everything was peaceful, the cops got mad. They admitted they're like, "Yeah, we're out here here to bust heads. We live for this shit. We're we're angry that there was no fight for us to break up. So if we get called back again and things are are peaceful, everyone's going to jail." And I'm looking at them like, "Well, thank you for your honesty about being Nazis, but wow." Yeah. Well, yeah, really, huh? Thanks for cluing us in, never to call you again. Yeah, no kidding. It's like, wow. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. It's almost 1 o'clock, guys. Chicago Trucker, are you on the line? Do, 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 do. My kids have no idea what that when I do that noise. The I have no oh my idea gosh, what those encounters are the third kind. Right? Right. <laughs> and, I'm, I and, I'm only, and I'm only 30. Nice. <laughs> oh my, now you've started it. Hey, it's 1.49 in the morning, and I want a salad. No salad. Salad? No, I need food. No, I can eat salad. Yeah, I'm going to 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 eat salad. I don't know if I'm bringing, I'm bringing any five mile run tomorrow. Oh, that'll do. 
I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do the look every morning to, to stretch stretch out my back. And mm-hmm. wow, that thing, thing kills. I think it's a month. I can't even do it for like a minute. Yeah. That's awesome. You know, also okay, guys. also the you can my messages while you talk. Okay. All right, so who are we right now talking about the electrical? That was Larry. That was Larry. Larry. Murdoch. 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 What's the first thing Hitler did? He disarmed everybody. What's the first thing any tyrannical government does? They disarm the people. (laughs) I gotta speak up about Hitler. Okay, I didn't understand Hitler. Hitler's perfect universe, everybody had blonde hair in their life. Okay, Hitler was a brunette. Mm -hmm. So he would have had to kill himself. Anybody weak enough to commit suicide shouldn't be here anyway. So, yeah. (laughs) Just saying. Right now, an analogy. That's the wrong, wrong word. Mm-hmm. Um, well, ty- what am I for? Ty- tyrants also have, I often have double standards and tend to be hypocrites. Uh, so, you know, no big shocker. Right? That's that ugly guy. He always like, like little haughty girls. <laughs> yeah, nobody ever wants me. I'm just a Barbie. Yes, I'm off the hook. Hello, Larry. Larry, I'm trying to find you on Facebook. I can't find you. You just say hello to me. That would be me, Murdoch. Hey, Murdoch. Murdoch, I would like to introduce you to Larry Murdoch. Yes, ma'am, I heard him uh, earlier. Murdoch, meet Larry Murdoch. Larry Murdoch, meet Murdoch. Now all we need, is, now all we need is Murdoch from the A-Team. Right, yeah. Hey, Larry, I'm trying to find you on Facebook. Sorry, guys, I'm trying to find you on glasses. I'm not from California. I have uh, some glasses on. I'm sitting at Starbucks. M-U-R-D-O-C-T. Isn't Murdoch you. Isn't Murdoch from the A Team the same guy who played Reginald Barkley on Star Trek The Next Generation? Or I can't no, my confusing actors. So. So. Yes, ma'am, it is. Larry Murdoch. Mm. Yeah, that's By the way, Murdoch is my first name. So we got a Murdoch with a first name and a Murdoch with a last name. On the same call. That's interesting. That's like having someone named David David or something. David <laughs> Davidson. Although my name is Dave Kelso. But no no Murdoch's in there anyway. But my middle name, interestingly enough, is Brian. But not with a Y. Sure, it's not. B-R-I-A-N, which is brain inverted. Sure. Flip the I and the A around. The same thing we do every night, Pinky, trying to take over the world. Did you not find me yet on Facebook? I just sent her the link. Oh, okay. oh you're yeah, on the computer. Can't do it on the phone. Oh my god, you're starting to come on out like. Who? I can't, I'm going to mention you on the line. But, um, <clears throat> um, oh shit, party. Hi. Remember the guy we were talking about yesterday? Which one? There was a couple of them. A couple of them were hot. No, um, um, oh, fuck. Text it to me. Message it to me. I have no idea. It's great, I'm hungry, and I'm blonde. (laughs) You tell her she's not allowed to have a salad, guys. No, I want her now, so we gotta message me, okay? Yes, I'm not that 
There, there's somebody you need to get rid of for a while, you won't I have like a million people. You should message me and let me vet because I don't even know I love you guys. I, I never take anybody else. <coughs> I can message you. I don't have a message box open to you. Oh my I, god. I, I, I'm going to go ahead and message you. Um, mm -hmm. Murdoch, I sent you a request. Yeah, I got you in here. Hey, can I play something that's really short in, in Barbie's honor? No. Right? Like it's, we don't it's, know what it's going to be. It's in your honor. <laughs> oh, it's fine. Yeah. Just have to let this load up here. You can play part of it. Oh, it's really short. It's like under a minute. Welcome back to Blonde Week on Jeopardy. And I believe that our blonde receptionist from Cucamonga has control of the board. Um, okay. Um, like, um, the blue one for 400? Um, they're all blue. Oh, duh. Would you please just select a category? Okay, uh, nuclear physics for like 400. And the answer is, this formula is used to calculate the energy emitted by splitting an atom. Bambi. What is... Oh, geez, I don't know. Close enough. Pick a category, please. I'll take American political process for 300, Alex. And the answer is, in the event of the death of the president, the holder of this position... Oh, I know, I know. Press the buzzer, please. What buzzer? The thing you're holding in your hand. Huh? Your other hand. Oh. Yes, Janelle. What? And the question is... I don't have a question. <sighs> oh, oh, never mind. Oh, I do. I do. We'll be back after this time. Where's the powder room? Forget it. Forget it. We're not coming back. Just forget it. Oh, I remember. Who's the one with the cutest butt? Please. Somebody this show. line is now on hold. <laughs> oh, and she put me on hold. <laughs> This line is now off hold. Muted. Oh, he muted himself. No, I didn't. <laughs> Larry Murdoch. Yes, yes. Nothing, I just like saying your name. There's just something about your name. The conference host has muted the conference. This line cannot be unmuted. Oh, they've got a new game going on now that they're filming. <laughs> they walk up to somebody behind their counter at a at a Wendy's, slapped her in the face, and then hooked it. Got out of there. No salad. <laughs> well, folks, this is just getting ridiculous. <laughs> way too ridiculous. It's getting right, way too late. So, I have exited out of the call. It's been streaming for quite a while now. Sorry that we didn't get um, Bundy on today. Um, that was scheduled for today, and something came up. We're not exactly sure what came up, but we got some people from the ranch talking, and... Um, you know, that was cool to hear them chime in and to get all the updates on what's going on. Um, we are going to be working towards getting Mr. Bundy on this stuff ASAP and, you know, see what we can do. So we appreciate your patience on this. Um, we're doing everything we can, and I really need to go to bed. I mean, honestly, and I, I can't think of a better cue than what just happened for going to bed than that. So... Everybody have a wonderful night or day if you're on the other side of the world or if you listen to this at some other point, have a wonderful whatever it happens to be. Thank you and, uh, you know, keep checking out the updates on community conference calls on Facebook and, uh, of course, y'all can call back into the line after I terminate this, um, you know, if you, if you want to dial in and, and participate while I am sleeping. <laughs> Um, the number, of course, is one five five nine seven two six one three zero zero, and the access number is two seven six one two five. That number again is one five five nine seven two six one three zero zero, and the access number is two seven six. One, two, five. 
So thanks everybody for listening and have an awesome night, day, whatever, and catch you later.